we're on there. Okay. Football greetings from Trojan Stadium in Salzburg, Pennsylvania. Tonight, we present Heritage Conference football. The Salzburg Trojans hosting the Homer Center Wildcats. Happy to be with you on WCCS AM 1160, 101.1 FM, the Trib Live High School Sports Network with the audio, and hopefully you are dialed in on the video as well with our pregame show. Our video stream tonight from Salzburg, is off and running so if you're at home or anywhere with your mobile device you can find the video stream by going to our WCCS Facebook page or log on to our website at WCCSradio.com go to the IRMC High School Sports Night page off of the events tab and uh, just look for the link for uh, tonight's video stream or another way of doing it is YouTube.com and just in the search engine type Homer Center at Salzburg 10, 9, 20. Wow. That's the date. So well, we're done, folks. Nice talk. <laughs> we welcome you to our <laughs> pregame show. You'll be hearing and seeing both coaches, head coach Mike Glazier of the Salzburg Trojans and Greg Page of the Homer Center Wildcats. But first, Ward, the 55th all-time meeting between these two schools. Last week, last year, I should say, when Salzburg came to Homer Center, they broke a seven-game losing streak at Memorial Field and also spent, uh, sent Homer Center spiraling a little bit. Uh, their inside linebacker, Brock Hauser, was hurt. Ben Schmidt wasn't 100%, and it was the start of what turned out to be a three-game uh, losing streak for Homer Center as they let a lead get away, which became an, an unfortunate trend in the second half of the season. Mike Lazier's done a fabulous job with his Salzburg program they are off to a slow start however one and three and josh gibbons losing him to graduation is one of the big reasons why <laughs> sure was he was a heck of a guy a great athlete uh, great fun to watch but uh, this is a solid team and you know if, if you take them lightly as i said any team in this conference seems to have the ability to knock anyone else off uh, this team i know they're disappointed with their start one and three they're better than that and Wildcats are going to need to be better than they were last week if you're going to beat them. It's been a while since Homer Center has lost here at Salzburg, all the way back to 1996 uh, by a score of 13-12. to 12. Salzburg came from behind that night, scored in the fourth quarter, and then held Homer Center off late in the game at the 23-yard line, stopping a four, fourth and four. Adam Knopf, I think you told me reading the article, I brought 33 <laughs> carries, including 13 straight. 13 straight carries there. They didn't hide what they were trying to do, but they just didn't do enough and lost by a point. So despite last year's outcome, and then back in 1996, Homer Center's last loss here, the Wildcats have dominated the series. They lead at 40 wins, 12 losses, and uh, there were two ties. The series actually goes back to 1937, a 0-0 tie. I don't think even you were around no, back then, quite. right? Not quite. So we're going to have more on our pregame show. We'll come back and set the stage a little bit more, and we'll be getting to both coaches too, Mike Lazier and also Homer Center's Greg Page when our pregame show from Salzburg Trojan Stadium continues here on WCCS AM 1160, 101.1 FM, streaming on the Trib Live High School Sports Network and video streaming, too, as part of Renda's digital TV. We hope you're able to take it in on one of our many platforms here tonight. We continue on the WCCS Trojans Heritage Conference Football Network. Maybe you've heard of the Colonial Experience, but did you know that that begins before you even walk in the door? At ShopColonialCars.com, we bring you a convenient way to begin your car shopping experience. Browse our selection of vehicles, and then come on in for the rest of the Colonial Experience. That's a lifetime warranty, lifetime state inspections, and more on your new vehicle, and a promise to keep working for you, even after you drive off the lot. Because giving you unparalleled service is what we do. ShopColonialCars.com really love the holidays at Graham Graham's, but it's tough to... Relax. 
The Dish Guy heard us. Said with the Dish Anywhere app, we could bring the comfort of our home TV along with us. Oh. Live TV, on demand, even our DVR shows. Feel good shows. <laughs> that put us right at ease. Mostly. So many eyes. Take live TV, on demand, and your home DVR anywhere. Dish, tuned into you. I'm Joe Pittman. Indiana County and its neighbors in the 41st District are Western Pennsylvania. Hardworking, independent people. The energy supplier to millions. We need a voice in Harrisburg and I humbly ask for your vote for Senator from the 41st District. Every day, businesses find ways to face whatever challenge that day brings. Communities find new ways to come together and families find more ways to stay connected. At First Commonwealth, we're ready to help you along the way, to help businesses take care of business, to help strengthen communities, and to help our neighbors look forward with confidence to whatever each day brings. We're ready, we care, and we're here to help. If you want to reach more customers, advertise your business affordably, increase sales. Every day, businesses find ways to face whatever challenge that day brings. Communities find new ways to come together, and families find more ways to... If you want to reach more customers, advertise your business affordably, increase sales, and grow your business, this message is for you. Hi, I'm Mark Burdick, Vice President and General Manager. At Renda Broadcasting, our marketing and digital team will take your advertising to new heights. Your business will soar with Renda Broadcasting and Digital. So if you're just getting your business off the ground or your existing business is sputtering, let our team go to work for you. Call Renda Broadcasting and Digital at 724-465-4700. Um, lost at Marion Center. They've had a tough schedule. I talked to Mike yep. Glazier about that. You'll hear the interview coming up momentarily. They opened up at Marion Center, lost big 56-35. Lost here at home to Penn's Manor, 33-13. to Both of those teams remain undefeated. They won at Blairsville in the interdistrict uh, rivalry, 32-6. to Did not throw a pass in that game. And uh, then lost last week at Purchase Line, 39-6, to although it was just 6 nothing at halftime. So they're really trying to find themselves. The big thing for Salzburg, they've turned the ball over. In four games, they're a minus 10 in the Ooh. turnover ratio. They've turned it over 15 times against just five takeaways. Well, you're never going to win many games when you do that. It's pretty obvious. And I know the Trojans, and that's, that's not their character. I look for them to try to run the ball. I'm sure they watch tape of what Penn's Manor did to the Homer D last week. And uh, I think we're going to see a, f a few sweeps here tonight. Uh, they've had Homer could not stop that last week. I'm, uh, oh, I'm sure they've made adjustments, but I'm sure the Trojans also made note of that. So it'll be interesting to see how they attack the Wildcats. Homer centers 2-1. and one. They come off of a loss at home, a wild one, 43-42, that we had right here on uh, WCCS and another video stream. They opened up with a 46-12 victory, Mercy Rule at United. Same thing, West Shemokin, Mercy Rule game 54-14 to before Penn's Manor just came in and dominated the game. Really, the score not indicative, no. although as crazy as it was, without the back-to-back -back kickoff uh, miscues where Homer Center just kept giving the ball back to Penn's Manor despite giving up 500 and some yards. Well, they probably wouldn't have given up that many if not for the turnovers, but they might have won that game even though – uh, they didn't play well enough to win and got the fate they deserved. Yeah, I, I think so, and I'm, I'm sure the coaching staff felt that way. And you, you got to be able to stop your opponent, and Homer could not. I think even if they'd have scored, Mark, and took the lead with, by a point, if Ben Schmidt gets in there, I still think the Comets would just come rolling back down the field. Homer could not stop them. They were getting chunks of yards, not a few, chunks. And uh, I, I totally believe they probably would have gone down and scored again. That was the first time. There's only been four games in Homer Center School history uh, back to 1923, my records go, where both teams have scored 42 points. That's the first time 
that uh, it happened and Homer Center lost, 43-42. The other three were victories, and amazingly, all against Purchase Line, 44-40 uh, last year was one of them, 48-44 in 2016, uh, and, and then 43-40 to September 26th of 2014. So pretty amazing stuff. Uh, ben Schmidt just keeps climbing the charts. He's the school's all-time passing leader. He's moved into fourth place all-time. He passed a couple of mics. He's all mic'd up like us tonight. He passed up your son, Mike Hilliard, moved past him, and also passed Mike Newhouse, and Ben is now rushed for 2,475 yards in his career. His next target is Pete Kuda. He stands uh, uh, at, in third place with 2,590 yards, so Ben needs 116 yards to pass Pete. He's 405 away from Ian Lee in second place, and I don't think it's out of the question, depending on how many games the Wildcats get in, 788 yards to become the all-time uh, leading rusher, which would be, be amazing if he can walk out of the school as the all-time leading passer and rusher. Well, he's, he's had a heck of a career, and he is a tremendous athlete. He's got all the tools, Mark, but that was a credit to the Comets last week. They kind of bottled him up, his passing game, was under 100 yards. That's very unusual. Just wasn't able to get the time to make his passes. And I'm sure Salzburg is wanting to do the very same thing as far as getting pressure on him. All right. When we continue on our pregame show, you're going to hear and see both coaches on our radio and video stream. First up will be Salzburg Trojans head coach Mike Lazier in his fifth season. 18 and 30 record, but he's done a good job of turning things around and getting participation up. One and three all time against Homer Center. We'll follow that up with Wildcats head coach Greg Page in his 14th season. Seven wins away from 100 in his career. He's 11 and two against Salzburg. The coaches reports up next. We say thank you to our executive producer of Wildcat Sports, Michael Burdig, D. Ober, and the video crew tonight on the video stream and our spotter has just arrived god bless him jim <laughs> mclaughlin is here more to come coaches up next here on the wccs trojans heritage conference football network been involved in a collision or accident, call the Collision Repair Specialist, Petroff's 81 Auto Body, a family owned business serving the community since 1946. Call Petroff's 81 Auto Body and Climber, the Collision Repair Specialist, at 724 254 9417. Our pregame show from Trojan Stadium continues, and as promised, head coach Mike Glazier of the Salzburg Trojans joining us. And coach, tough start to the season. I look at uh, some numbers, and boy, the one thing that pops out the turnover ratio. You're a minus 10 after four games, and that has to be one of the reasons the record sits at one and three. Definitely, yeah. We've turned the ball over a lot. Um, you know, and that, that goes along with some of our inexperience this year, but uh, we, we got to protect the ball. In the game we did win, which was Blairsville, we, you know, we didn't turn the ball over. We protected the ball and uh, played mistake-free football, and we got to get back to that. There have been, I think, parts of every game last week included in the first half against purchase line where you do some good things and uh but then things really start to mount and uh just being consistent becoming consistent right. easier said than done right definitely yeah you know last week we came out we played pretty well um you know but we got to get to the point where we can make plays uh you know when we need to make plays we, we got to have playmakers step up and uh, you know we haven't done that consistently throughout the year so that's something we definitely need to improve on but I was very happy with our defensive effort in the first half but you know Seister just kind of wore on us in that second half and uh, you know he, he got after it. Well the schedule maker too you know there's going to be inadequacies with the schedule this year with the playoffs starting earlier and your schedule has uh, been pretty difficult out of the gate and it doesn't really get a whole lot easier tonight against Homer Center does it? No definitely not you look at the teams we've played so far you know uh, other than Purchase Line, who is a good football team, you know, those teams are, are up in the top of the conference, and, you know, that goes with saying tonight with Homer City. Um, but we played some tough teams, but that is what it is, and uh, we, we got to get better, at, you know, as a team, and, uh, you know, that's what we got to do tonight. Mike, obviously, this year, 2020, I think we'd all like to turn the calendar and get back to some semblance of normal, and that will include uh, the unusualness, the District 6 playoff format where the regular season will basically be interrupted on October 23rd and then uh, many teams if they get eliminated from the playoff should they qualify will resume games uh, some regular season games just so players get to compete any thoughts on the format that they came out with 
you know, I heard the, you know, what we're doing, and you know, I'm fine with with however the they feel that uh, is the best way to to have a playoff system. Um, you know, right now, you know, the way we're looking at it, we got to win some games, and we want to be in the playoffs. Um, you know, if something like that wouldn't happen where we get in the playoffs, we would try to honor our season. But but right now, the the goal is to make the playoffs and get on a little roll here. Uh, you know, going into the playoffs. Well, let's talk about this evening's game. Homer Center, uh, they put up a lot of points this season. Last week, they really struggled on the defensive side. As you know, what do you see from uh, Greg Page's ball club? They definitely, they're very offensively, they are extremely talented. Um, they have skill guys all over the field led by Schmidt. But, uh, you know, just playing against Schmidt, that, that's an opportunity for our kids to go out and battle against one of the top players, you know, in Indiana County. Um, so it, it's a challenge, but, you know, I, I think our kids are up to it. Um, you know, and we're looking forward to that. You know, they're coming off a tough loss uh, to Penn's Manor, and, uh, you know, they're going to be ready. We're going to have their, their best, so we got to be ready to go and uh, get after it. Other than the obvious turning things around in the turnover area, what do you have to do tonight to walk out of here with a victory? We got to come out and play good defense from the start. Uh, that's going to be the key. We got to create a couple turnovers, um, win that turnover battle that, you know, we've struggled struggled in up to this point in the year. But uh, kids just got to come out excited. We got to we got to make plays when when given the opportunity and uh, get after it. So, I'm looking forward to it. I don't expect you to, to disclose secrets, but when you're playing against a player like Ben Schmidt, do you do something completely uh, different defensively than maybe what you'd normally do? You gotta preach your kids to gang tackle because he's a tough kid. You know, you watched last week; he's dragging kids. That, that's what you gotta do. You gotta tackle, and you gotta get lots of guys to the ball. Um, you know, and he can throw the ball too, so he does it all. You gotta be sound, but when he runs, you, you gotta gang tackle, and you gotta get there. You're, you're gonna be in trouble. Mike, I appreciate you doing this. It's great to be back here in uh, Salzburg. Of course, our video streaming partnership, too, has worked out great, so I'm happy to be on that end of things with the Trojan game here this evening, and uh, we appreciate your cooperation. We wish you the best of luck tonight. Thank you. Appreciate it. Mike Lazier, head coach of the Salzburg Trojans, his ball club, and the Homer Center Wildcats on the radio, and yes, on the video, you can find the stream on our any of our websites, including WCCSRadio.com. We are streaming right now, so you can... Uh, Hook up and uh, watch the game and listen to the audio as well. We're going to come back on our pregame show, both radio and video, walk across the sideline and visit with 14th year head coach Greg Page. That and more when our Wildcat Trojans pregame show continues here on the WCCS Heritage Conference Football Network. I'm Pastor Katrina Lottie from Homer City United Methodist Church. We are honored to be able to support the Homer Center Wildcats. This has been a difficult year. We want to let you know that you are not alone. You are seen, you are heard, and you are loved. We are open for in-person worship on Sundays at 9.30 a.m. with the wearing of masks and social distancing. Our sermons are also available on our Homer City United Methodist Church YouTube channel. Come and be encouraged. owned Fox's Pizza Dens of Southern Indiana County are seeking staff for their Salzburg, Blairsville, and Homer City locations. Get a flexible schedule and a fun work environment with competitive pay. A manager is needed in Salzburg, and delivery drivers are needed at Homer City, Blairsville, Salzburg, and their new Alexandria location. Visit on the web at ajobyoucanlove.com or stop at a location nearest you or look on their Facebook pages to inquire about employment opportunities. No matter who you are or where you are, CNB Bank makes it easy to take care of life's necessities, like paying Uncle Rick back for lunch or depositing that paycheck for dog sitting. And even if you prefer to bank, the more traditional way, we still rock that too. Welcome to CNB Bank. Experience better banking at CNB Bank. Scott Hillsbury here with Colonial Toyota. I'm excited that our doors are finally open and we're happy for all of our other local businesses too. We understand that buying a car right now may not be top priority for some, but for those looking for reliable transportation, we're here for you. With new Toyotas at 0% for 60 months and a great selection of certified pre-owned vehicles, there's no better time to buy. So stop in at Colonial Toyota or visit us online at shopcolonialtoyota.com where the experience can't be beat.
The Indiana County Technology Center Adult Education Program offers a variety of career pathways for adults. Whether you're looking for a new career or simply just learn new skills, ICTC's selection of diverse programs will help you achieve your goals. Our programs are tailored to fit your needs and offer industry-specific certification opportunities. Call today at 724-349-6700 to find out how we can help you become more successful. This is State Representative Jim Struzzi, and I respectfully ask for your vote on Election Day. I will continue to fight for your rights and your future. I remain committed to improving the quality of life in our region and making sure our children have the best education possible. Re-elect me, Jim Struzzi, on November 3rd. Been involved in a collision or accident? Call the collision repair specialist Petroff's 81 Auto Body, a family owned business serving the community since 1946. Call Petroff's 81 Auto Body and Climber, the collision repair specialist, at 724 254 9417. Our pregame show from Trojan Stadium continues with head coach Greg Page of the Homer Center Wildcats. We just heard from Salzburg head coach. Mike Lazier. Coach, don't want to dwell on it. I'm sure you'd like to move past a bit last week. Certainly a strange football game. Offensively, you score 42 points, but you come up a point shy. That's the first time in school history that you score over 40 and uh, lose the football game. And, you know, you, you always talk and hear about winning all three phases of the game offensively, defensively, and special teams. Really, if you were to point at one of those three phases, you, you lost two out of the three uh special teams really hurt you two fumbled kickoffs and a fumbled punt yeah and you know the special teams plays usually get magnified just simply because there's not as many of them um you know we we talked as a staff we did not play well defensively at all that that's bared out by the yardage that they had and and um, our lack of being able to get key stops when we need to get the ball back uh but yeah i mean i i, I don't know what else to say special teams was a disappointment too um, they hit us with some timely things with the squib kicks and we just didn't handle it. And it's one of those things you gotta, you gotta learn from it, emphasize it a little bit more and make sure that it doesn't happen again. 114 plays from scrimmage in that football game. Salt, or Penn's Manor ran 78 of them. The Wildcats only 36. Have you ever been involved in anything like that? No, and usually, you know, up until two years ago, we were running an offense where it was ball control and we were typically the team that had more plays and more time of possession. Um, you know, we've shown we can score, uh, but, you know, we don't want to be in a shootout necessarily. We have to do things like we did the first couple weeks. And um, again, credit goes to Penn's Manor for, for finding ways to exploit that. So, yeah, we need to turn the tables. I, I don't mind only having 36 plays and 42 points, but not the way it was given to the opponent, too. Well, uh, if I'd have told you you know, if you didn't know the outcome or your record at two and one, and I'd have said last week you would average 10.6 yards per rush for the season. You're averaging 10.2 yards per play from scrimmage. No brainer, you're three and zero, oh, right? Well, I pr probably the first thing I would have said was I hope we stop them then, uh, which we didn't do consistently enough. So yeah, I mean, you know, it, it's got to be. And again, the first two weeks were complete games. They really were. But this was a team that. That, uh, they came ready to play. They're well coached every year. We've been through that. Uh, they're consistent, and we didn't match that. When you look at a game like that, and you then get ready for the next part of the season, um, special teams and defensively, easy to panic maybe sometimes. Um, what? How do you approach it as far as uh, do you change personnel, change looks defensively? I'm speaking uh, of. Well, yeah, and you know Salzburg will give you different looks offensively. That's the challenge there. They been known to come out in a power eye, then go spread, and then do some wing T stuff. It's it's one of those things where then you have, you're have you forced to prepare for all of those. So what it made us do was focus on our three or four fronts and types of coverage and say, look, we're going we're gonna to cover whatever it is with these, and, and this is what they may show out of this, and just line up and play football. I think that's the biggest thing. 
special teams, there was a couple personnel changes. We had a couple kids, no fault of their own, that were probably in a tough spot with where they were in the alignment on the field. Um, so, you know, you, you, you make those adjustments, you, you go through some of those reps, make people more aware. Um, it just wasn't a good night all the way around, so you kind of have to just take anything you can from that to improve and then, you know, bury that tape somewhere. One young man that played his heart out, statistically it sure showed Justin Walbeck, 17 tackles last week. Big night for him. Yeah, and you know, a lot of those tackles were lateral, moving sideline to sideline because of their jet sweeps. Uh, you know, Justin's one of our, our tough kids. Uh, he's an anchor there in the middle defensively at linebacker. He's got great heart. Uh, just a quiet kid that comes to show up to work every day and continues to get better. Okay, let's uh, focus on Salzburg. Uh, of course, uh, Sincere, or Trayvon McFarlane, as he's now known, uh, transferred from one side of the district to the other. Certainly gives them a weapon. He gave you fits down at Blairsville. I know you were uh, banged up in that game late last year, but between him and their uh, fullback, running back, Gino Bartolini, and uh, a couple of other Bartolinis, uh, they, they, like many teams, have some weapons, and I'm sure they'll, they're watching tape too, and I'm sure they will test your edge defensive game. I, I wouldn't expect anything less. I mean, they're, they're, they're great kids. I mean, you know, I think with him into the mix now, you got a, you got a scat back guy on the edge, you got a tough guy up the middle with Gino, and then Angelo is kind of like our old swing back. And our old offense, it can do different things. He can run wide. He can, um, he can run for tough yards. He's got a nice cutback. Um, and then, you know, the stats kid, when he needs to, can throw the ball well. And uh, they got the yard kid back. They got him at tight end. He's a big target, good athlete. Um, and, and the Stoller kid seems like he's been around forever. Uh, he's a fine receiver. They, they make you get concerned about people and, and um, defending all the areas on the field. They've struggled with turnovers. They're a minus 10. Um, through four games, 15 turnovers. Um, I'm sure that's a battle you're going to want to win tonight, um, unlike last week. Yeah, you have to win that battle. I mean, usually it comes down to things like turnovers and penalties. Uh, I don't think we were highly penalized last week, but the turnovers can trump that. Certainly the timing of the turnovers and the emotional roller coaster of a couple of those turnovers with a fumbled punt and then onside kicks completely can deflate you and, and, and uh, gain momentum for the other team. So that, those are areas, yes, we got to continue to hammer away at that. Yeah, and your team has only committed nine penalties this year in the three games, 24 for your opponents. So that's a pretty good number there. Yeah, you know, I mean, you hope that you're disciplined. I mean, you know, one of our penalties last week, our, one of our kids was getting beat. And, you know, sometimes you tell them, hey, if he double moves you and you're getting beat, grab him. Uh, don't give up the short touchdown. So we, you know, we did that on one of them. Um, you know, it, it just, it's one of those things. You just got to be the more disciplined team. They've given up 33 and a half points per game, so I'm sure you'll want to keep your offense going and uh, maybe control the ball a little bit more than you did. If you take care of it, I guess that takes care of itself. Yeah, and you know, we, we looked at a couple different wrinkles offensively. We like what we have, but we continue to try to add to things within our concepts, um, you know, both the run and pass game. So I think we have a couple things that may work. Um, you know, those are things throughout each week that can get the kids a little bit excited too. Uh, but here's what it comes down to, Mark. It comes down to good fundamental football. And to me, we always say use your pads, being physical on both sides of the football. Coach, thanks for doing this. Good luck here tonight at Salzburg. Thank you guys very much. Head coach Greg Page of the Homer Center Wildcats. We're going to come back with more. Coach's report, by the way, brought to you by Walbeck Insurance. More choices, more savings. Walbeck Insurance in Homer City. Thank you, Rob Walbeck. And congratulations to uh, Rob's daughter and uh, Justin Walbeck's sister, Veda Walbeck, for being selected as the homecoming queen Wednesday night at Homer Center. Coming back with more on the radio and the video stream here on the WCCS Wildcat Football Network. Introducing, oh, there you are. <clears throat> Introducing, the card that gives you a better way to pay. You've swiped, you've chipped, but now you can simply tap and go. The first Commonwealth Bank MasterCard contactless card 
makes checkout simple at millions of locations. Fast, secure, convenient. Tap your first Commonwealth Bank MasterCard contactless card at your favorite checkouts today. Been involved in a collision or accident? Call the collision repair specialist Petroff's A1 Auto Body, a family owned business serving the community since 1946. Call Petroff's A1 Auto Body and Climber, the collision repair specialist, at 724 254 9417. I'm Joe Pittman. Indiana County in the 41st District deserve a senator who knows the issues, cares about people, and works hard to improve our quality of life. I will continue to stand for you in Harrisburg. Please vote for me, Joe Pittman, for State Senate on November 3rd. RMC at Chestnut Ridge. Get in, get out, get better. Ward, we haven't done this all season long. Let's give you the Mains Chiropractic Adjustment as we get yes, set for the Mains Chiropractic starting lineups. Now, doesn't that feel better? Oh, it's be just here. wonderful. Just wonderful. Yeah, four of the Trojans. The left end will be Tristan Rossler, senior, 6'2", 160, left tackle. Will be Kyle Rossler, sophomore, 6'2", 230, left guard Matthew Izzo. He's a junior, 5'11", 190. The center will be Nate Simpson, a sophomore, at 5'8". 307. Center, uh, Ward Dom Bartolini, uh, a freshman who is 5'8, 200. You one need or the other. Chart. Guard will be Brad Miller, sophomore, 6'225. Two, two Derek Graff is the right tackle. He's a junior, 6'215. Braden Yard will be the tight end, senior, 6'1, 215. Quarterback, looks like Braden's stats will get the start. The junior at 6'170. He can help you with. And uh, Gino Bartolini Sorry will be that. the fullback. Gino is a, a 5'11", 210-pound senior. Trevor Sincere McFarland is the uh, running back, a junior at 5'8", 170. And Rocco Bartolini will be in the slot. He's a junior at 5'10", 165. For the Wildcats, 
Shane McCoy will be the tight end. He's a senior, six foot two oh six. Left tackle will be Isaiah Bentz or Nick Manzanilla. Isaiah is a junior, six four two fifty four. Nick is a senior, six one two forty one. Sage Bernard will be the left guard, junior at five nine two thirty one. Micah Hurd's the center, senior, six one two seventeen. Vinny Tagliotti is the right guard, a sophomore, five nine two oh seven. Mike Yunt, the right tackle. 6'4", 254, and Drew Kaufman will be the wide out on the right side, the senior at 5'10", 168. In the backfield, Ben Schmidt, the senior quarterback at 205. Justin Walbeck will be the tailback or the running back in that formation, a junior at 6'1", 184. And the wide out will be Travis Mock. He is a senior at 5'8", 171. Mark? All right. All right, I have the mic on when I'm talking to the public address <laughs> announcer, and I have it off when I'm supposed to be talking, but we'll get through this. Starting lineups brought to you by Maine's Chiropractic, adjusting today for a better tomorrow. Warren, we want to say thank you. i got to back my mic off a little bit, but uh, thank you to the Point Street Tavern in Salzburg. They brought up some delicious sandwiches. You had a rye sandwich, pretty good stuff, yeah, huh? Rubens. Or, Ru or Ruben, Ruben's yeah, sandwich. Ruben, Ruben. Yeah, well, yep. rye Ruben, rye, you've got to have rye. <laughs> <laughs> Sandwiches provided for tonight's radio broadcasting team. Compliments of Point Street Tavern in Salzburg. That's Mr. Rossi's brother, by the way. Sandwiches oh. on the menu include the Mule, the Martin, and the Reuben. You got the Reuben. I had the Mule because I'm slow as one, I guess. I don't know why Jerry said I get the Mule. Carrying all this stuff up. Point yeah. Street Tavern in Salzburg. Great food, craft, and bottled beers. And good, I think I said something I'm not allowed to say on a PIA Boy broadcast, so slap my wrist. Good friends, make for an enjoyable night out. Follow them on Facebook, too. That's Point Street Tavern in Salzburg. I have heard a lot of good things about Point Street Tavern. Tavern, so they're looking forward to getting on the other side of the pandemic. Who isn't, right? So they can get oh, back yeah. to their more regular hours too, because we'd be able to go there after the game, but not tonight because the hours uh, are a little Nobody's lessened. Nobody's open at one in the morning. No, <laughs> well, those yeah. days are gone for me anyway. <laughs> hey, since you already know the answer, let's quiz our spotter, Jim McLaughlin, see if he gets the answer. You uh, did not get it in my office yesterday. No. So the question is, Mr. McLaughlin, who? is Homer Center's leader in all-purpose yards this year. So we'll play the theme song to, to Jeopardy, <laughs> and he's thinking about it. Boy, <laughs> not, not all time. This year in three games, who's their all-purpose yard leader this year through their first three games? So he's, uh, he's thinking. Everybody, of course, guess. who did he guess? Garrett Cisak. He he guessed well. Cisak all time would be a good guess. Yeah. He he like you guessed Ben Schmidt, and that is wrong. With 386, 13 ahead of Ben Schmidt, is Michael Krajosek. He had a kickoff for you know, a couple of long kickoff returns. He had a fumble recovery for 87 yards last <laughs> uh, week. Ward, I mentioned Little Italy in Salzburg. <laughs> the Italian section of Salzburg is alive and well. Oh, what are you? They Brothers are, are here. <laughs> <laughs> brothers are we. Uh, Salzburg's roster features three sets of brothers, led by Gino, Angelo, and Dominic Bartolini, and then Rocco and Santino Bartolini, cousins of course, and then Kyle and Tristan Rossler. Last year they actually had six sets of brothers, Amazing. which accounted for 45% of their <laughs> roster, by the way. Uh, the only broadcaster that points out this kind of stuff. Brothers Gino and Angelo, they're good ones. They're all the, all the uh, Barlinas are great athletes. They rushed for 1,300 yards ago, uh, last year. As a matter of fact, 1,324 of the Trojans' 1,926 total rushing yards last year belonged to Gino and Angelo and probably their outstanding quarterback who all coaches except for Mike Leisure are happy uh, that he graduated. Josh Gibbons, Josh Gibbons had quite a few himself. Homer Center this year, uh, one set of brothers and they were twins. Christian and Nick Pribish, they are twin brothers and they're freshmen on this roster. So um, that's that. We'll try I, to I, talk I, about the playoff uh, format maybe at halftime, but we're getting set and Homer Center is going to kick off. I love the Wildcats look tonight. I if the too. cameras, uh, we do have radios uh, if we wanted to get the camera folks downstairs radios, but uh, all white tonight. I'm sure Zach, our press box cameraman, can zoom in on the Wildcats uniforms uh tonight i i like the all white look well what a what another nice night though huh we have been so lucky 
the first four games that we've covered, uh, with a lot, they've been just spectacular nights. Angelo Bartolini back deep for the Salzburg Trojans. Ben Schmidt has it teed up. Cats in their white pants, white jerseys, black numeral. There's no trim and black helmets. And it's an end over end kick headed toward the nine yard line taken on the far side of the field by David Stuller up to the 20 to about the 22 yard line. We'll see on special teams who made that tackle. Shane Shady McCoy, says spotter Jim McLaughlin. And Jim, thank you so much for your help again here tonight. We want to say hello to Denny Mester, who has been our spotter for years and battling a little ailment, too, uh, uh, with a little chip bone award. That's from Did Karen I just violate? Uh, hit, yeah, Karen, he, could, he could probably <laughs> sue us, right? Yeah. He was helping me. and We hauled that equipment up all the time. This year, it's even more ridiculous with it, all his video stuff. Ball on the right hash. Braden Stats opens at quarterback with split backs behind him. Motion man is Trayvon McFarland, and they give it to Bartolini up the middle and over the 25 to about the 27-yard line for a good solid gain of six or so. Justin Walbeck, who had 17 tackles last week against Penn's Manor, makes the first tackle of the game for Homer Center, but good first down yardage for Bartolini, who is... Rushed for 207 yards on 50 carries, 4.1 average. He scored seven touchdowns. He's a load, too. He's got big legs. I always say those big thighs, those corners don't like tackling guys with those big thighs, and he, he's going to be tough for the Wildcats. David Stuller comes near side a couple of receptions this season. They haven't had a lot of success passing the football. The give to McFarland, he tries bouncing it outside, cuts it up, makes a nice little jump cut at the 28 to the 30 to the 33, has a first down. Michael Krajosik on the stop for the uh, Homer Center Wildcats, but not before McFarland picks up a first down. He had 200 yards rushing in their only victory in the first half against Blairsville before the Bobcats made some adjustments and shut them down in the second half. Pretty well defense, just not good tackling by the Wildcats. And uh, Again, you could see the uh, tendency there. They're running the sweep. They're going to give them a dose of Bartolini up the middle. Salzburg is and then they're going to try to get to the edge on some of those plays. So Wildcats are going to have to be on their toes. First and 10 from their own 33. They give to Angelo Bartolini off the right side over the 35 to the 37 and still going. Look at the strength. He takes the Wildcats defense up to about the 39-yard line. Justin Walbeck again on the stop board. Yeah, Justin does the bulk of the tackling for him. That's a six-yard pickup. And uh, he does the bulk of the inside tackling, but the, you can't do that six yards downfield. And this is, uh, you know, the Trojans are doing uh, pretty much what I thought. They're going to probe the inside, and then they're going to come back with those pitches around the edge. Second down and a short five. Motion man McFarland toward the near sideline. Repositions as a wing left, and... The give to Gino Bartolini, off left tackle. He cuts it back and has another first down up to the 44-yard line. So a little bit of ground and pound for the Salzburg Trojans. Walbeck again on the stop at it again, Ward. But the Trojans, two first downs out of the gate. They averaged 21 and a half points per game, 193 yards rushing, only 58 passing. 251 total. That's eighth in the Heritage Conference. Their big problem has been turnovers, as well, we talked about on the pregame. Way to keep Homer's offense on the bench is to control the football, which they're doing. Wingman to the right. They give it to Angelo Bartolini. Not a lot of running room this time. From one side of the 45 to the other, he goes from the Trojan 44 up to uh, just over the 45-yard line. We'll call it a gain of two. Justin Walbeck again on the tackle. Uh, boy, he has 30 coming in to lead the team, five for a loss, uh, five tackles for a loss, and as I mentioned just moments ago, 17 tackles last week against Penn's Manor in that 43-42 loss. You know, they're, sw they're using Ben Schmidt on the end because they're trying to strengthen their end play, Mark, and they're switching him side to side so the Trojans can't find him. He's going to the strong side usually. Second down, eight to go. Ball just over the 45 on the right hash. And a flag before the play gets underway as we look out of our S&T Bank broadcast booth. Relationship banking, one customer at a time. S&T Bank and a procedure penalty on Salzburg. You know, the Wildcats, it's an area that they've been pretty clean in their first three games. They've committed only nine penalties. Their opponents have now committed 25 of them. 
So um, that's, a, that's a good stat to yeah. be on the right side of. And I told you Smith was on the strong. He's actually on the weak side. And, uh, yeah, those are drive killers. I've said that many, many times. Those five-yarders just kill drives, especially when you're trying to run the football. So they're behind the chains now, second down and 13. Ball still on the right hash. Wingman is McFarland to the right. Split backs behind Braden Stats, who, like McFarland, came over from Blairsville. And they hand it off to Bartolini, trying to get to the corner, but Michael Kurjosic grabs him. A late assist by, from Michael Yunt. And they uh, give him the 43, pretty much back to the original line of scrimmage. So it's going to set up third down and 10 for the Trojans. Would the Wildcat defense, after being torched last week, 23 points allowed per game, 220 yards rushing, 64 passing, 284 per game. That's right in the middle of the Heritage Conference standings. But that uh, took a hit last week, didn't oh, it? Oh, terrific hit. That's that's embarrassing That's all you can say about that if you're a homer fan third down and uh, almost 11 for the trojans they put a man uh, as a receiver to the right luke woodring and gino barlini wants to pass incomplete over the middle intended for the tight end Braden yard big six, six foot one 215 pound senior who came back out for football so glad to see that hello to jt his father uh, good friends with JT, and I want to say hello to Jack Yard. I think you know Jack, oh, right? Oh, very well. Jack, if you're uh, watching or listening, hope you're doing well. We think of you frequently. Salzburg's going to punt. The punter is Tristan Rossler, nine punts, 32-yard average. Drew Kaufman, Travis Mock back deep. They stand inside their 30. The snap is true, and the kick is away. It's a floating kick. Backs Mock up. And he allows it to bounce, picks it up on a hop, but inside the 15-yard line, and he's going to be smothered at the 11 or 12. He's trying to fight for yardage, but he finally goes down, and the Wildcats are going to take over, pinned in uh, pretty deep in their own territory. Yeah, it's a great punt. That ball turned over, as they say. Nice spiral, and then it just kind of came down like a jet plane, and uh, Travis did all he could to just catch it and corral it there. Good job, Homer's possession. The key is to catch the ball, not to turn it over. Looks like 13 is where they're gonna start. So the Wildcats will take over at the 13. Scoreless in this first quarter. First possession for Homer Center. They average 415 yards of offense per game. First in the conference, 47.3 points per game. They come out in a shotgun look with a sidecar to the left of Schmidt, that is Justin Walbeck, and the snap goes through Schmidt, and he uh, fumbles the ball, it's loose, and let's see if the Trojans have it in the end zone. If it is, it's a, well, I think they're gonna, one uh, yard line, I think. Yeah, it's gonna be Trojan ball at the one yard line. Wow. First play, Homer Center turns it over. It didn't look like a bad snap. Just took his eye off the ball, and we got, an injured Trojan here, or is that a Wildcat? It's a Wildcat down. So we will step out. Injury on the field, and we'll take a timeout with 7.02 remaining in the first quarter. Trojans knocking on touchdown door. After we come back, they're attending to an injury of a Wildcat, we believe, down around the one-yard line. Scoreless, coming back. Salzburg ball, first and goal on the WCCS Wildcat Football Network. Maybe you've heard of the Colonial Experience, but did you know that that begins before you even walk in the door? At ShopColonialCars.com, we bring you a convenient way to begin your car shopping experience. Browse our selection of vehicles, and then come on in for the rest of the Colonial Experience. That's a lifetime warranty, lifetime state inspections, and more on your new vehicle, and a promise to keep working for you, even after you drive off the lot. Because giving you unparalleled service is what we do. ShopColonialCars.com. I'm State Representative Jim Struzzi, and I want to wish all of our students, our student athletes, our faculty and school staffs, and your families a great year. We all look forward to better times ahead. I promise I will continue to fight for your rights and your future. Re-elect me, Jim Struzzi, on Election Day. Uh, boy, I'm not seeing him over there.
I know. It was a homer pitch. Back out for this one. Back with you, the injured Wildcat, Justin Walbeck. They attended to him for a very long time. Walked off the field with some assistance and then under his own power, so we will monitor that. But Salzburg, as a result of the Homer Center turnover, first and goal at the Wildcat one, and Braden Stats under center, turns, hands it to Gino Bartolini, slants off the right side into the end zone for a Salzburg touchdown. One play, one yard. Trojans make the turnover hurt. Six nothing Salzburg, 6.58 to play in the first quarter. Yeah, it wasn't much of a surprise. I think you kind of knew a guy that size in the backfield is going to get an attempt, especially hit the one. Wasn't much resistance. Rossler to attempt the extra point for Salzburg. Snappers Angelo Bartolini. 6.58 to play in the first quarter. Snap is strong, it's put down, and the kick is up. And the kick is good off of the hold of Braden Stats and Salzburg with the lead, 7-0 on an Indiana Regional Medical Center High School Sports Night. Coming back with more on the radio and the video stream on Renda Digital TV after this on the WCCS Wildcat Trojan Heritage Conference Football Network. State Representative Jim Struzzi, and I want to wish all of our students, our student athletes, our faculty and school staffs, and your families a great year. We all look forward to better times ahead. I promise I will continue to fight for your rights and your future. Re-elect me, Jim Struzzi, on Election Day. And we welcome you back to Trojan Stadium, the Trojan Sting Homer Center early. Wildcats commit a turnover, one yard touchdown run. And Rustler's kickoff, mock at the 16 yard line, heads far sideline, now cuts it back and Angelo Bartolini has him at the 21 yard line. So the Wildcats will take over Angelo Bartolini on that tackle. That was good coverage. They were down in a hurry, and uh, Wildcats didn't do a whole lot of blocking, so he gave the Trojans credit. They got Homer bottled up again. They are stunned right now. They got to shake it. Going to be without their fullback. Yeah, I think he's going to make it back. Just watching the way he walked off. He's such a tough kid. I'm sure he's going to want to play. Early on in Blairsville, it is purchase line seven. Blairsville, nothing. Colin Troop in for Wahlbeck. He'll line up to the right of Schmidt from the shotgun. I might be wrong, Ward, but I don't think the snap on the first play that Wild, where Homer Center turned it over was a bad snap. Empty backfield now, and Schmidt looking to pass. He's going to throw deep downfield, and Krajosik trying to run under it, but he can't find it at the Trojan 45-yard line, and the Trojans were bringing some heat yeah. on Ben Schmidt. He didn't have much time to, to get much on. He, did, he got the pass away, but it wobbled. I was watching him warm up. He was throwing some really pretty strikes in the warm-ups, but that one wasn't. Colin Troop, by the way, in limited action, has carried the ball 11 times for 48 yards. He did score a touchdown, his first varsity touchdown at United. They reposition him as a protector to the right, and Schmidt wants to pass. He's going to throw deep down the left sideline again, and oh, through the outstretched arms of Drew Kaufman. So back-to-back -back plays going deep 
Ward, I know you and I sometimes <laughs> would prefer to see the short pitch and catch stuff that against a lot of Class A competition is there, but the Wildcats have gone for the downs on the first two plays. And I'm sure the Trojans were looking for that. They know Ben has that ability to throw deep, and you got such good athletes and quick. You get them the ball and let them get the yards. Ben rolls out to the right. He wants to keep it. They get a piece, but he runs through a tackle, cuts it up at the 25, and uh, leaning the ball to the 31-yard line. I think he's going to be about a yard shy of the first down, going to depend on the spot, but an outstanding effort from Ben Schmidt. Uh, not sure who made that a, tackle. I think he might be a gambler over there, Mr. Page. Izzo on the stop for the Salzburg I, I, it's, Trojans. It's less than a yard. From, from what I can see, yeah, maybe a solid yard, but uh, I think they might try for it. Well, they went for it, if you remember last week, it yeah. backfired against Purchase Line. I mean, against Penn's Manor. Yeah, everything backfired that game, though. Ben's going to maybe sneak up, go under center, quarterback keeper, and they stand him up. They're trying to hold him out of there, and I, I, think, they, uh, I think they did. It's going to depend on the spot. And... He's got a pretty generous spot there. I don't forget to measure that. It, it is a first down. Wow. Wow. Great <laughs> effort by Salzburg, though. I'll say. You and I both thought that was stuffed. There was not much forward progress on that. That's Ben being 205 doesn't hurt any, does it? That's a lot of fight from Ben Schmidt. 7 nothing Trojans. They capitalize on a Wildcat turnover halfway through this first quarter which is being brought to you by friends of Jim Struzzi. Troop in there, Walbeck is hurt for Homer Center. H back to the left is Shane McCoy. And Schmidt takes the snap, gonna throw deep again, and nobody's there. It's a stop and go look from Drew Kaufman. And I'm, the Wildcats are just out of sync here. Well, you know, the thing is, the Trojans are getting pressure on him, and he's not having any chance really to just put that ball to where he wants it. So he's throwing before he wants to throw, which throws the timing off. Receiver can't run under it. I, I still think, you know, some little hooks or little quick outs and let these guys use their speed and quickness to gain yardage. Twin receivers near side. And Schmidt, read option, hands it off to Troop, trying to get to the left corner. Does have running room to the 35, to the 40. And I think he's going to have a first down for Homer Center. Up the left sideline, uh, and McFarland, Trevor, or uh, Trayvon McFarland made that tackle for the Salzburg Trojans outside linebacker. And Troop up to the 40. He's going to be short of the first down, actually, by a couple. So they say he stepped out of bounds. Almost nine yards on that, though, and showed some quickness to the corner. That was good to see. Full house backfield here, and Schmidt hands it off, cutting it back, and it is Travis Mock. First down yardage up near the 45-yard line. Tra Trayvon McFarland on the stop. That's as close to a power eye as we'll see from Homer Center there with that. I don't know what the formation's called, but the Mock made a nice cut at scrimmage there and was able to pick up the first down. Braden Stats also on that tackle. So first and 10 from the 45 of Homer Center. They trail 7-0. Shotgun, it's Ben Schmidt looking to pass. There's a short pattern. McCoy takes it in at midfield and gets to the 45. Tackled on the far side by... Rocco Bartolini, we have Rocco, Santino, Gino, and Angelo all in the Trojan defense. A gain of nine, it'll be second down and a yard. That's too easy. I mean, that's the kind of stuff that the, the Wildcats need to do, and the Trojans know that. They're going to see that'll bring the defense up if you're a Homer fan. Schmidt fakes it to Troop, makes a uh -oh. nice cut. Here he comes near side of the 40 to the 35-30. 20-yard line, makes another cut, and he just loses his footing as making that stop was Angelo Bartolini, the um, outside linebacker for the Salzburg Trojans. Outstanding running, Ben Schmidt from the 45 down to about the 18-yard line. We'll call it a gain of 27. Purchase line has just scored, Ward, as we look at our monitor of our other video stream that we're producing tonight. They lead Blairsville 15 to nothing. Here we go, first and 10 Homer Center as they look to answer back. Mock in the backfield now with Ben Schmidt. Ball on the right hash, Schmidt takes the hand off, or hands it off to Mock, I should say, and he's gonna lose a yard back to the 19. Gino Bartolini, inside linebacker, and he's a good one. 5'11", 210 pound senior, and they're gonna lose a yard back to the 19 yard line. 
Yeah, this big play offense has, has gone into a more of a ball control kind of a mode here. Just try to get themselves back into some kind of a groove, Mark, and I think it's a good way to go here. Shane Shady McCoy, tight end left. Near side receiver is Michael Krajosik. Colin Troop in the backfield, and Schmidt going to look to pass. Has a man wide over, open over in the middle. Shady McCoy cuts it up into the end zone. Fumble the football as he got across the goal line, and they're going to say touchdown. They're going to say touchdown. I do believe the, the uh, side judge ruled it a touchdown. Now let's see if it gets turned over. He definitely ruled touchdown, and now, now they're going to have a conference. I thought he was in, but... Oh, he, along. Had, he had no resistance there, and he, he kind of stumbled as he was crossing the goal line. And I don't know if he lost control of the ball, but once it breaks the plane, it doesn't matter. The it's officials like pass. are conferring. And uh, it looked to be a touchdown, but then the ball <laughs> definitely came loose and was recovered by Salzburg. And the officials going to wave it off. The touchback, no touchdown for Homer Center. Second turnover for the Wildcats. This game is bizarre right now. McCoy wide open in the middle of the field. The Trojans have been blitzing off the edge and having some success. That time Homer caught him. And McCoy, uh, I don't know if someone touched him or caused him to stumble or he just lost his balance, but the ball pops out (laughs) either just as he crosses or after he crosses, but regardless, it's a touchback, and the Trojans are setting up, and that was about a nine-play drive that ended up with nothing. Recovered by David Stoller. So two possessions, two turnovers. Salzburg takes over with 2.47 to play here in the first quarter. Trojans know about turnovers. That's what's hurt them all year, and they're, they're getting them this time. Braden Stats, the quarterback, gives it to Gino Bartolini, backs his way for about four yards on the play. We'll see who's in there at that middle linebacker position for Homer Center. Caden Brown on the tackle for the Homer Center Wildcats. We'll call it a gain of four, second down and six. Seven-nothing Salzburg here at Trojan Stadium. Coming to you from our s and Bank broadcast booth, Relationship banking, one customer at a time. Salzburg operating right to left as we look out of the broadcast booth. Stats under his center, Nate Simpson. uh, Angelo Bartolini repositioned to the right. They're going to throw a halfback option pass, throwing downfield to a receiver incomplete. It was Braden Stats, the quarterback, who was streaking in front of the homer center bench, but Bartolini overshot. Braden stats, so Salzburg, you always expect a trick or two out of the Trojans when you come to uh, Salzburg or when they visit you, right? Either it's the Rosebud or a Muddle Huddle. And they know what uh, your tendencies are, and they like to play against that a little bit. Uh, that was a nice play. Gino's an excellent passer, as you saw. They're just a little too strong on that. Gino has thrown just three times coming into uh, tonight's action. Uh, Braden Stats was the starting quarterback. They've also used a freshman as of late, Luke Woodring. Bartolini at quarterback here on third down and six. Empty backfield. Angelo, his uh, brother in motion behind the formation, and he's going to take it and boot to his right. Throws on the run, and he short hops his intended receiver at the 35-yard line. That was David Stuller. On the coverage, Mason Bell and Travis Mock for the Homer Center Wildcats. And it'll be fourth down, so the Wildcats uh, dodge a bullet. They dodge one there. You know, that was uh, just a little too quick here. He, I think he didn't realize he had the time he had and just threw the pass a little too quick, which put it right into the grass. Mock and Kaufman back to receive the punt from Wrestler, who got off a 46-yarder his first effort. Snap a little bit high, but he climbs the ladder, gets it out of there. And it's a punt that's going to bounce right at the 40. Picked up on a hop by Mock to the 35. And he's hit from behind and going to go down at the 40. We'll step out briefly. The tackle made by Rocco Bartolini. 7-0 Trojans coming back on an IRMC High School Sports Night on the WCCS Wildcat Football Network. So that was... uh, 
privately owned Fox's Pizza Dens of Southern Indiana County are seeking staff for their Salzburg, Blairsville, and Homer City locations. Get a flexible schedule and a fun work environment with competitive pay. A manager is needed in Salzburg, and delivery drivers are needed at Homer City, Blairsville, Salzburg, and their new Alexandria location. Visit on the web at ajobyoucanlove.com or stop at a location nearest you or look on their Facebook pages to inquire about employment opportunities. Pastor Katrina Lottie from Homer City United Methodist Church. We are honored to be able to support the Homer Center Wildcats. This has been a difficult year. We want to let you know that you are not. Like they had a touchdown, but it was not. There's a flag. Somebody flinched already, I think. Now let's see what this penalty is about, Mr. Hilliard. Official took his time walking back the referee, tell him it was an illegal procedure. So they seem to think the center might have been moving the ball a little more than he needed to. And uh, that, uh, that's the only thing I can say, Mark, because I saw nobody move. Guys up here seem to think that's what it was. All right, now it's first and 15. I mean, Homer's not doing themselves much in the way of helping themselves out here in this first quarter. Schmidt fakes it, going to keep it. Schmidt, five yards, runs over a would-be tackler, but making that tackle for the Trojans, it was Ethan Kishlock who's into the game defensively. Gain of six back to the 41-yard line. Took a pretty good shoulder from Mr. Schmidt there, Ben. It was out of options, so he tried to run him over. Kishlock, to his credit, hung in there and brought him down. Nice tackle. Second down and nine. Troop in the backfield. Ben's going to keep it. Ben comes near side, has running room to the 45-50. First down, Homer Center in front of the Trojan bench. Hard-nosed running inside the 40 down to about the 38-yard line where he's tackled on the play by Tristan Rossler of the Salzburg Trojans. Rossler. Not among the starters given to me, but he uh, was in there to make that stop. And the Wildcats pick up a first down from the 41 of Homer Center to the 37 of the Trojans. That's uh, 22 yards. Schmidt thinks about the pitch. He's going to keep it. Heads far sideline this time, and they ride him down. Good tackle from behind by Angelo Bartolini. And... Uh, Going to limit Ben to about two yards on that play. Looked like he was going to get out. and uh, Yeah, so and if he does, you know, he can go. But, uh, again, the short little passes that they used earlier, I think are something they could go back to. You know, Ben's run about the last three in a row here. Todd uh, Marino sending us a score. Marion Center leading Northern Cambria 13 to nothing in the first period. Schmidt from the shotgun, going to throw deep down the left sideline for Mock, hauls it in at the 10, and he scampers into the end zone down the left sideline for the touchdown. And Homer Center does indeed finally get on the board with no time left on the first quarter clock. Homer Center pulls within a point, seven to six. Beautiful pass, 35 yards in all. And this time Ben had a little bit of time had some edge pressure, but stood in there and then put a perfect strike to mock five plays. Uh, you had where they started from. I'm not sure. Well, it was the 40 and then the 35. All right, so they went uh, 65 yards in five plays. Drew Kaufman, the holder. Shady McCoy, the long snapper. Ben Schmidt to attempt the extra point. He's 10 of 13 this season. And Salzburg, I think, just jumped offside. So will that tempt Homer Center yeah, to maybe go for two? Turn around on the Homer sideline. It looks like it is going to change their mind. Here there goes comes the some offensive so, yep. uh, personnel. They'll move it to the one and a half yard line. Let's see Justin Wallback standing over there. Helmet's off right now, and he's trying to flex his leg. Colin Troop sidecar to the right of Schmidt from the one and a half yard line. Schmidt. Fakes it, and he's uh, bottled up, and they're going to tackle him for a loss. He just threw the ball, hoping somebody was in the end zone, and that doesn't work. That was ugly from the beginning, yep. and the first quarter is over. We're going to take a break. Head to the second. Thanks to friends of Jim Struzzi for sponsoring the first quarter. Homer Center, their own worst enemy in the first quarter, but they trail by just a point, seven to six, on an Indiana Regional Medical Center high school sports night on the WCCS Heritage Conference Football Network. 
Pastor Katrina Lottie from Homer City United Methodist Church. We are honored to be able to support the Homer Center Wildcats. This has been a difficult year. We want to let you know that you are not alone. You are seen, you are heard, and you are loved. We are open for in-person worship on Sundays at 9.30 a.m. with the wearing of masks and social distancing. Our sermons are also available on our Homer City United Methodist Church YouTube channel. Come and be encouraged. I'm Joe Pittman. Indiana County and its neighbors in the 41st District are Western Pennsylvania. Hardworking, independent people. The energy supplier to millions. We need a voice in Harrisburg and I humbly ask for your vote for Senator from the 41st District. Okay, I didn't know what we were doing. Back with you at Salzburg, Ben Schmidt has it teed up for the Wildcats. And the kick is away, end over end kick, gonna be taken by Angelo Bartolini at the 14 yard line to the 30 and to about the 35 yard line. On the kick coverage team for the Homer Center Wildcats was Petey or Sargas. And is there a flag on the field ward? There appears to be. Yep. You assume that's some kind of blocking infraction. It's over here on the near sideline on the 30. Let's see what they call. Chop block. Yep. So that'll move it back from the Wildcat 34. So they'll back them up 15. And uh, should take it to the 19 yard line. Well, they're gonna put it down at the 20, so the old 14 yard penalty. <laughs> it's alive and well here in beautiful downtown Salzburg. Trojans coming up, nice job by their defense. They're really working hard against that home row. Trojans. With the big center, Nate Simpson, he is a big in Ward, a sophomore, 5'8", 307, as yeah. you mentioned on the uh, Maine's chiropractic starting lineups. Nobody over him either, <laughs> so he has to go to the defender. So stats, they look to get things reset here. I'm not sure what the delay is. Middle linebackers are, uh, it's Mason Bell that have moved in there, so uh, who moved into Mason's position? Brock Hauser is normally uh, an inside backer. He's there. The give, Bartolini. I see who it is. Uh, Bartolini, gain of about three to the 23. Defensively for Homer Center, Riley Clevenger is who they inserted, Ward, but not at the inside backer position. So you move Mason Bell into the inside yeah. position and insert Clevenger into the monster back position. Riley, a good prospect, sophomore 5'10", 160 Five pounder. Actually, uh, no, that's not right because Riley normally is the starter or outside he backer, was, so yeah, we're missing he's, somebody. He's played out there. Yeah, before. we're Yeah, that's my bad. We're missing. Who's on the outside corner? Well, that is Clevenger. The give, there and it's uh, Trayvon McFarland, and he's dropped by Clevenger in his own backfield for a loss of two. So Clevenger back-to-back -back tackles. So we're going to figure this out. Who the new player is in there? Krajosic, Shane McCoy. Okay, so they have inserted McCoy for Riley, I mean for Walbeck, although they moved Mason Bell into the inside backer position. So I'm assuming that McCoy is at that monster back position. Or maybe they have Clevenger there. But, I, I think uh, they maybe keep Walbeck out at least until half evaluate him and then see what goes the third quarter. Here. Third down and seven, 10-35 remaining in the first half, 7-6 Salzburg. And Gino Bartolini from the shotgun, empty backfield. Double slot to the right, he rolls to the right. He's gonna throw back and it's incomplete. I think it was the tight end uh, yard that they were trying to spring free, but he kind of got uh, in a bottleneck there and couldn't yeah, get well, loose and it'll be fourth down. It's fortunate for the Wildcats because they had a couple blockers over there and maybe one defender and that, that play could have gone big time, but uh, fortunately it was overthrown. 
Homer's going to take over and get some decent field position here. Maybe they think they can settle themselves down a little bit. Third punt for Ressler in this first half. Mock and Kaufman back to receive it. As I mentioned, coming in 32-yard average, he had a 46-yarder on his first attempt. This one, a low floating kick. Wildcats allow it to bounce, and a tricky hop. Mock picks it up, and he's tackled high and then lost the ball. And let's see if they're going to rule that down or not. He really got tattooed, and I think he got the ball back. Tackled yeah, by Andrew barely. Bartolini. Boy, he took a... Pounding. Well, that time when he caught it on the hop, the defender was just about two steps from him, so he had no time to secure it. He was fortunate he didn't fumble that. This has been a, a bizarre evening to start with for Homer Center. They're just having all kinds of problems hanging on to the football and sustaining their blocks. From the 33-yard line, Homer Center will start this drive, trailing 7-6. to six. Again, I, I, if I'm the Wildcats, I go back to that short passing game. Ben is very accurate, gets the ball there in a hurry, and their timing's generally real good. And those guys are quick. They break a tackle, there's a big gain there. For the Wildcats, their own 33. Near side receiver is Drew Kaufman. Matching up on him is Rocco Bartolini. And they give it to Troop up the middle, runs through a tackle, good running room to the 40, keeps the legs churning up near the 42. And uh, still hasn't gone down. What an effort by Colin Troop. And uh, let's see where they put him down. Looks like they're going to put him down a yard shy of the lead chain. Leading the convoy for Salzburg was Cody Bear. Bear, a sophomore, 5'11", 210. You watch on the TV there. I think the Trojans oftentimes have only had maybe one lineman down. The other ones are standing and moving around and making it difficult for Homer. Timeout on the field, an official timeout. Time for us to remind you that quality health care is a short trip away when you visit IRMC at Chestnut Ridge, comprehensive outpatient facility in Blairsville. When minor illness or injury strikes, Urgent Care is open seven days a week from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. IRMC at Chestnut Ridge, located off Old Route 22 next to Chestnut Ridge Golf Resort in Blairsville. IRMC at Chestnut Ridge. Get in, get out, get better. They're going to bring the chains in for a measurement. We'll step out for 30 seconds. Salzburg leading 7-6 to six with 9.36 to play in the half on the WCCS Wildcat Trojan Football Network. I'm State Representative Jim Struzzi, and I want to wish all of our students, our student athletes, our faculty and school staffs, and your families a great year. We all look forward to better times ahead. I promise I will continue to fight for your rights and your future. Re-elect me, Jim Struzzi, on Election Day. Back with you, the give to Colin Troop, and Troop was manhandled by Braden Yard for a loss, so it goes from second and one to third and a solid three for Homer Center. Schmidt from the gun, looking to pass, gonna throw an out pattern, the defender fell down, Kaufman takes it in for a first down at the 45, and they spin him down just down below us near midfield in front of the Salzburg bench. It was Bartolini, Rocco Bartolini making that stop, the right cornerback, and it was Rocco that actually slipped on the coverage ward that really opened that up. Well, that's what I was talking about earlier, those quick outs, the short passes, let your quick receivers make something out of that, and that's exactly what happened there. Ten-yard pickup, first down. Purchase line leading Blairsville 21 to nothing in the first half. They'll be at Homer Center's Memorial Field next week. Empty backfield, Schmidt. Boots to his right, backside pressure coming, throws on the run, and in and out of the hands of Michael Projosic, and Michael will tell you that's one I should have caught oh at the Trojan 45-yard line, but instead it goes as an incompletion. Four of eight for Ben right now through the air. Rushing, he needed 118 to pass Pete Kuda and move into third place all-time on the rushing list. He's already the leading passer. Homer Center's had only three quarterbacks in the past 10 years. He's 
Cole McAnaldi in the game. Ward, we were talking about that on the way yeah, good down. Athlete. Bunch receivers near side. Riley Clevenger in motion. They fake the jet, and Schmidt is in trouble. He eludes tr trouble to the 50, 45, 40. Runs through a couple of tackles to the 35, 30. Runs through Rocco Bartolini's tackle. Cuts it back. He's at the 10, the 5, the touchdown, uh, touchdown and a sensational 49-yard run by Ben Schmidt. I swear he ran through 11 red jerseys on his way to the end zone to give Homer Center the lead, 12 to 7, with 8:18 to play in the first half. Sensational, Ben Schmidt. 103 total yards for Ben. And, uh, you know, again, if you see he makes the first wave miss, the, you got to be going uh oh, if you're the uh, a Salzburg fan, and that's pretty much what he did. He got into the secondary. It's an excellent block. Homer's going for two. Schmidt with the uh, troop in the backfield, and Ben. Fakes it, keeps it, and tries getting to the goal line, and he does. Two-point conversion is good. Homer Center grabs the lead for the first time in the game, thanks to the magnificence of Ben Schmidt. 8-18 to play in the first half. Homer Center now 14, Salzburg 7 on an Indiana Regional Medical Center High School Sports Night on the WCCS Wildcat Football Network. Jeez. Every day. Businesses find ways to face whatever challenge that day brings. Communities find new ways to come together, and families find more ways to stay connected. At First Commonwealth, we're ready to help you along the way, to help businesses take care of business, to help strengthen communities, and to help our neighbors look forward with confidence to whatever each day brings. We're ready, we care, and we're here to help. Maybe you've heard of the colonial experience, but did you know that that begins before you even walk in the door? At ShopColonialCars.com, we bring you a convenient way to begin your car shopping experience. Browse our selection of vehicles, and then come on in for the rest of the colonial experience. That's a lifetime warranty, lifetime state inspections, and more on your new vehicle, and a promise to keep working for you, even after you drive off the lot. Because giving you unparalleled service is what we do. ShopColonialCars.com. Back with you at Trojan Stadium. Four play, 67 yard drive. Drive summary brought to you by Colonial Motor Mart and Colonial Toyota in Indiana. There's a squib kick, takes a big bounce and a second big bounce, picked up by Rock Angelo Bartolini at the 20. Over the 25 and pretty good kick coverage by Homer Center limits him to the 27 or 28 yard line. Shane Shady McCoy on the stop for the Homer Center Wildcats. What did that? Uh for Shane was that it took a second big hop and that allowed his, him to get down there and pretty much put the kibosh on any return. Trojans are setting up now at the 29 yard line. 21 yep. nothing purchase line over Blairsville at uh, Ernie Widmar Field. Purchase line looking for their second straight win. That's a good win. football team for one and three. They're very good. From the 29, Braden Stats hands it off, and it is Angelo Bartolini with some pretty good running room as he cuts it up, gets near the 35-yard line, tackled by Michael Yunt of the Homer Center Wildcats. A gain, though, of about seven yards. We're going to change the line of scrimmage. They reset the chains, and it's about oh, the 28, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. At first, they had the football marked at the 29 ward, as you said. So second down, call it a short four. A little sweep action there, Mark, if you notice. I, I think they're going to go to some of those sweeps because they saw Penn's Manor doing it. Stats under center. Long count, and he gives it to Gino Bartolini up the middle, lowers the shoulder, going to bang close to a first down, although he, he may be a yard shy on the tackle for Homer Center. Shane Shady McCoy has been active in this football game. Shane gained a lot of size from uh, last year. Ward. I had him at 168 as a junior. Right now, he's listed at 6'2", 202. He must be on the Mark wow. Burdick eating plan. Yeah, he's eating some pretty, pretty heavy. Uh, I don't want to say it's the brand here. Just say he's been eating pretty well. Third down and a yard for the Trojans at their own 37-yard line. They need the 38. They have split backs behind stats. They put uh, Trayvon McFarland 
in motion. Now they reposition him, and they hand it off the left side, and Gino Bartolini breaks into the secondary. First down into Homer Center territory to about the 44-yard line. Anthony Rowland finally stopped him, who's in there defensively. But a gain of uh, 12, what, uh, 18 yards? They got 16, maybe I'm wrong here. 38 to 12. Six. Plus six is 18. Okay. Good hard running though. But Bartolini gets in that secondary. Like I said, these safeties don't want any part of him. <laughs> it took two guys to bring him down. He is tough. 210 pounds himself. We talked about Shady McCoy with good size and Gino gives you every bit of that. McFarland in motion again toward the Homer center bench. He sets up as a left wing and they give it to Gino who spun down after a short gain that time and it was Shady McCoy again for the Homer Center Wildcats. They limit him to about three yards from the 39 to the 30 or 41, I'm sorry, 44 to the 41 yard line. We're spoiled at Homer Center with the uh, yard markers <laughs> and everything painted on the field. Second down, we'll call it seven. Receiver near side is David Stoller. Uh, Stoller, he has a couple of grabs to his credit. In motion is Angelo Bartolini. They hand it off to Gino off the right side and Gino to the 35 yard line. On the stop for Homer Center, Riley Clevenger. But not before he rips off a gain of six and it'll set up third down and short. Salzburg uh, positive yardage ward. Uh, when you're not playing behind the chains, uh, you can be a lot more yeah, effective. They're, they're Beaten inside with the Bartolini is a tough inside runner, and uh, of course losing Wallback makes it tougher. His linebackers are going to have to toughen up. Third down and a yard. Angelo Bartolini, receiver. Uh, no, correct that. Change that up. It's uh, Santino Bartolini, receiver near side, and Stats hands it off to Gino. Gino is hit by Caden Brown. They push him back. He tries backing his way for a first down. They're going to get him a little bit of positive yardage, but he wow, might be it. inches shy of a first down. We're down to 440 to play in this first half. I didn't think he even made the yard marker, Mark, but they got him across that. Yeah, I think he did initially, and then they pushed him back. But it's going to be fourth down and a half yard unless they bring the chains in for a measurement, and I think that's what the referee wants to do. Okay. So we'll take a break, 426 remaining in the first half. Homer Center 14, Salzburg 7 on the WCCS Wildcat Trojan Football Network. Nestled in the heart of Indiana County, the Indiana County Technology Center serves over 400 students from eight sending schools across the county. The evolution of our programs follow industry trends, fulfilling unique workforce needs right here in our own backyard. The ICTC is empowering tomorrow's workforce with an engaging, real-life approach to career and technical education. We offer 13 high-demand program areas and a variety of career pathways. Employable, certified, and driven. That is what an ICTC graduate looks like. An eye on him, which is good. He did take a good pop. Was that another touchdown for Purchase Long? Yeah, we have it on on the uh, stream on the iPad here. Right now, I think they did score. First and 10 Trojans at the Wildcat 34. And Stats hands it off to Gino Bartolini. Shady McCoy, another one. For Homer Center, boy, Shady's playing well here. Also on the stop, uh, Mason Bell. Well, that's what Homer needed to stop the first down play. They've been giving up yardage, uh, four or five yards at a clip there, and that time, uh, just a yard. Second down and nine, playing without two starters defensively. So Anthony Rowland in there now. It starts to test your depth. And yeah, it sure it, does. the good thing is if uh, you're successful and can get out of here with a victory, it builds depth if you're a Homer Center supporter. And uh, from the Homer Center perspective, I guess I should say. Second down and nine, McFarland in motion behind the formation, repositions again left wing, and they're going to give on a counter, and it's clogged up. And Angelo Bartolini is tackled. Let's see who has him, Caden Brown for the Homer Center Wildcats. He's been a real find for Homer Center. Ward, he's done a nice job. He's uh, fifth on the team 
with uh, in tackles from that nose guard position. He has a couple of sacks to his credit, and there's a tackle for a loss, a oh, TFL. Big play, yeah, he just filled the gap right there, did not leave this spot. That counter ran right into him, he made the tackle, good job. Purchase line leading Blairsville 27 to nothing in the second quarter on our out of town scoreboard. Oh boy. Somebody's asking how far Ben is away from the rushing record. Mr. Marshall, we'll get to that. He's uh, quite a ways away from the lead spot, not far away from Pete Kuda now. But it's Salzburg with the ball, and Stats rolls to his left. Going to have to throw against his body. He throws, and too tall for the intended receiver, David Stoller. And now it'll be fourth down for Salzburg. Ward, what is uh, Ben's? I know we're... Uh, they got him for 103 yards. 103 yards, which takes him... six carries. That takes him up to 25... 178 yards, so he's 12 yards away from tying Pete Kuda, 13 for moving into third place all time. Leading rusher all time is uh, Jesse Lee, what a player he was, 3,262 yards, and his brother Ian is in second place all time, so if Ben can pass Pete Kuda tonight, it'll be Ian Lee that's next on the target list, and Ben is the quarterback. Yeah. So here we go, big fourth down play for both teams. Homer Center leading 14 to seven. Trojans fourth down and 11, ball on the near hash. Oh, there's and there's movement, movement from the right wing position. And for Salzburg jumping the gun, Tristan Rossler. And that's gonna back up the Trojans five to the 41 and make it a fourth down and 16. Those are the killers I keep talking about. An extra five yards back. Makes it all the tougher down here. Or four and a half, depending on how they spot it. <laughs> you watch that stuff. Wildcats, again, the key to stopping this is uh, a pass rush. And the Trojans looking like they look going to change things punt? up and punt. I want to say hello to Chris Graham just texted in, watching us in uh, Orlando, Florida oh, area. What a shame. He's not in Disney World. But what a hey, shame. we got Florida weather up here tonight, Chris. You can let us know how that stream looks tonight. Zachary Bolt, Homer Center uh, oh. grad running the camera, and the bad snap on the punt, and they get it away, and it uh, barely might have been partially blocked by Braun, and it goes into the Homer Center bench at the 43. So the bad snap created a mess, and Homer Center is going to have good field position when we come back with 225 remaining in the first half. Cats lead the Trojans 14-7 to on the WCCS Wildcat Trojan Football Network. Just one, Michael. Really love the holidays at Graham Graham's, but it's tough to relax. <gasps> the dish guy heard us. Said with the Dish Anywhere app, we could bring the comfort of our home TV along with us. Oh. Live TV, on demand, even our DVR shows. Feel good shows. <laughs> that put us right at ease, mostly. So many eyes. Take live TV, on demand, and your home DVR anywhere. Dish tuned into you. Homer Center after that negative three yard punt. First and 10 at their own 43. Schmidt throws out in the flat and Drew Kaufman is tackled immediately. Nice play by the Salzburg Trojans. Trayvon McFarland and it's gonna be a big loss. We'll see they're gonna put it down at the 36 yard line. So that'll be a completed pass for a loss of about seven or eight yards. Yeah, I marked it as eight. Yeah, it was well done. McFarland got out there. Again, Kaufman's one-on-one, -on -one, but McFarland made a good short open field tackle. That play goes big if it doesn't happen. From the gun, second and 18, and Schmidt fakes the handoff on the read option. He backs his way for a couple, but good Salzburg defense limits him to about four yards. That's a big win for Salzburg. Gino Bartolino, uh, Bartolini and Angelo Bartolini. And on your Bartolini chart, Gino, Angelo, and Dominic are all brothers. And there's a timeout called by Salzburg. Or was it Homer Center? No, it was Salzburg. Salzburg. They to. All right, 133 remaining in the first half. IRMC High School Sports Night coverage continues with the score. Homer Center 14, Salzburg 7 on the WCCS Wildcat Trojan Football Network. I'm Joe Pittman. Indiana County and its neighbors in the 41st District are Western Pennsylvania. Hardworking, independent people. The energy supplier to millions. 
We need a voice in Harrisburg, and I humbly ask for your vote for Senator from the 41st District. Now this is like another thing, like I don't know what to do when, because if they're not doing anything, then like what do you focus on? You focus, you focus on them. them. You focus on the players as much as you can. Yeah, the huddle. Still. Uncanny. Out of the Salzburg timeout, Homer Center third down and 13 from their own 40. Ball on the left hash and Schmidt Takes the snap, rolls to his right, going to throw on the run, throws a dart. First down, Homer Center, out of bounds goes Drew Kaufman at the Trojan 45. I'll be honest, there's not a lot of quarterbacks in the Heritage Conference that make that accurate throw on the run. And right on the button to Drew Kaufman, who just hauled in his 10th uh, reception. Tristan Rossler on the coverage and uh, kind of a token uh, out of bounds force for uh, Ross or credit on a tackle for Rossler, but Look, Ben did the work. <laughs> you well described. Yeah, rolling right, a bullet right on the money for the first down. That's hard to do at this level, and he did it. From the Trojan 46, Schmidt looking to pass again, quarterback draw. It breaks one tackle to the 45 40, runs over. Braden oh, Yard and another uh, Salzburg red jersey down the right sideline. He's past Pete Kuda. He's going for the end zone, and he stopped and pushed out of bounds at the, about the one or two yard line. About a 45 yard run. Rocco Bartolini finally stopped him. I hope many of you are watching the video stream to appreciate this outstanding senior, Ben Schmidt, who has just passed and bulldozed his way past Pete Kuda in the third time on the all-time rushing list. Breaking rush. tackle after tackle. He will not be denied. Ben <laughs> is really a fierce competitor if you know him at all, and I do. He's my niece's son. Here we go. First and goal from the two-yard line. Schmidt now jumps up under center. Quarterback keeper dives for the goal line. Did he get in? No signal yet. And there yep. is one now. Touchdown, Homer Center, Ben Schmidt. Why not? He did the heavy lifting, and he finished the work. And the Wildcats with 107 left here in the first half now lead 20 to 7. Just uh, uh, a joy to watch this young man, Ward Hilliard, Ben Schmidt. Yeah, it, you, I think you hit the nail on the head when you said if you're watching, you, you need to be watching this to sit, really appreciate the stuff we just saw. It's very hard to describe. He's just a. Uh, yeah, there's an old guy who used to play football named Bronco Nagurski, and that's the kind of runner he was. Uh, most people don't know about him, but I do. Ben Schmidt to attempt the extra point uh, out of the hold of Drew Kaufman, but a timeout called first by Homer Center. 67 ticks on the first half clock. Wow, this is fun to watch. It's Homer Center 20 and the Salzburg Trojans 7. Probably not so much fun for the Trojans to watch, but uh, Schmidt, I think any football fan would appreciate his play, and he's led Homer Center uh, on the comeback trail. They lead 20-7 to seven on the WCCS Wildcat Trojan Football Network. Is that, was that 45 yard run to set that up, right? Maybe you've heard of the colonial experience, but did you know that that begins before you even walk in the door? At shopcolonialcars.com, we bring you a convenient way to begin your car shopping experience. Browse our selection of vehicles, and then come on in for the rest of the colonial experience. That's a lifetime warranty, lifetime state inspections, and more on your new vehicle, and a promise to keep working for you, even after you drive off the lot. Because giving you unparalleled service is what we do. ShopColonialCars.com. I'd like to thank D. Ober, our uh, executive producer on the video side. Zachary Voigt. Uh, am I saying that right? Voigt. Vote. Vote. Uh, yeah, remember to vote. They've turned that into election season now, have they? Whatever happened to election day? Uh, but anyway, uh, he's a graduate of Homer Center, Zach, and uh, he's running the main camera tonight in the press box. Thank you, Zach. He's been part of our crew each and every week on our video streams. We've had him all over the place. And hopefully next week he'll be back with us at Memorial Field, perhaps. We'll have, I think, three streams next week. Ben Schmidt, the kicker. Drew Kaufman, the holder. Shady McCoy, the long snapper. And we're still waiting for the snap. It's 
snapped, it's put down, and the kick is up, and did it get over the upright? It did. So the teams come up field. It took a while to get to the extra point, but it, we did indeed get there. And Ben Schmidt in the process is now number three all time on the Wildcat rushing list. He's having quite a first half. Word will update his stats for you uh, when we come back on an Indiana Regional Medical Center High School Sports Night. 107 remaining in the half, 21 to 7. Homer Center over Salzburg on the WCCS Trojan Football Network. Introducing. Oh, there you are. <clears throat> Introducing the card that gives you a better way to pay. You've swiped, you've chipped, but now you can simply tap and go. The first Commonwealth Bank MasterCard contactless card makes checkout simple at millions of locations. Fast, secure, convenient. Tap your first Commonwealth Bank MasterCard contactless card at your favorite checkouts today. Jack Cardoni from the Mark Cable Insurance Agency. We're proud to be a part of tonight's internet broadcast. The Mark Cable Insurance Agency, which represents Erie Insurance, has locations in Salzburg and Blairsville. For all your home, car, life, and business insurance needs, we hope you will think of the Mark Cable Insurance Agency, conveniently located in Salzburg and Blairsville. Good luck, area teams. It was Caden, oh, Michael Krajosik, the kicker. kicker. I knew it was either him or Caden Brown and our spotter, Jim McLaughlin, crediting Michael Krajosik, and if not for Krajosik, that's six points in a hurry. Yeah, it was. A nice job by Michael. That's a job, though, as the kicker, you're the safety. You're the last guy back, so you got to be able to make that play or at least slow the runner down for the pursuit. Nice job. Good return by McFarland. 33-yard return. He hasn't touched the ball much offensively, though. That's, that's curious that they're not using him that much. Yeah, yeah, I, I'm with you. Under centers, Braden Stats. Angelo Bartolini wing right, and Stats rolling to his right. Going to set up and throw deep for Stoller, who's breaking free, and he takes it at the 15, the 10, the 5. Touchdown, 48 yards as Salzburg answers right back. It is Braden Stats, third touchdown pass of the game. Stoller, his first touchdown reception of the season. You just can't allow that to happen in the final minute, but Homer Center did, but Salzburg is happy about it, and they are right back in the football game. It's 21-13 with 49 ticks on the clock. Well, you don't want to do that late in the game, late in the quarter, late in the half, any time like that. Get beat deep is a sin, and uh, boy, just well executed by the Salzburg Trojans. Tristan Rossler to attempt the extra point out of the hold of Stats, and the snap is put down, and the kick hits the upright and comes out. And the two-point conversion fails. So, just like that, it was set up by a beautiful kickoff return from Trayvon McFarland that covered 33 yards, and then Stats to David Stoller for a 48-yard touchdown pass. Extra point fails, but just like that, it's 21-13. We wouldn't expect anything else from these two teams. They've played a lot of crazy games through the years. Cats by eight on the WCCS Wildcat Trojan Football Network. Yeah. We didn't talk about anything super bad during that time. Otherwise, we would have we would have been told about that. That was all before and after. Coming back. No bumper. Back with you. Is it teed up? 49 seconds left here in the half, and it's a little pooch kick. Going to be taken at the 27-yard line by Drew Coffin. Makes a quick move at the 30. 
to the 35 and forced out of bounds near side on the Salzburg Trojans kick coverage team making that tackle David Stoller along with Kyle Rossler, brother of Tristan the kicker. So the Cats with 43 seconds left and timeout department, they have two. I wouldn't say they're going to just sit on it, Ward, the way I, this I thing is going. I don't think. They might try a couple of little outs, see if they can move it down the field where they have a shot at uh, some deeper passes. Middle of the field, though, is, is maybe the, the area to attack. Or you just let Ben Schmidt run. Or we were going to update his uh, rushing stats here in the first half, and I never did. Nine carries, 153 yards. It's average night. Colin <laughs> Troop kind of uh, asking for help on positioning, and Ben Schmidt repositions him right to left as a protector. Twin receivers up top, and Schmidt with backside pressure coming from McFarland dumps it off underneath, but it was behind the intended receiver, Michael Krajosik, who did find a seam and was oh. wide open around midfield, but Ben that time off target. Nobody near Michael if he catches that. Salzburg uh, defensively, let's see in the secondary, looks like they're playing a little prevent. By the way, purchase line in the first half leading Blairsville, 35 to nothing. Unless that changes by halftime, it'll be a mercy rule wow. second half. Although Blairsville's driving, they're at the Salzburg 36. And uh, pass completion for the Bobcats uh, to about the 25. Here we go, second and 10 back to Salzburg meantime. <laughs> Twin receivers, Riley Clevenger and Krajosik. They throw out in the flat to Krajosik, who a little hook and ladder to Colin Troop, who takes it up the right sideline, dives out of bounds near midfield. Well done. That's going to be about 12 yards, the old uh, hook and ladder play, yeah. unless they're going to rule him out of bounds earlier. Gino Bartolino, uh, Bartolini made the tackle, and they are going to say he was out of bounds at wow. the 45. He was diving for midfield, but evidently. Must have stepped out. Yep. Five-yard pickup. Third down and five. Little trickery for the Wildcats. Well designed and executed. Schmidt from the gun. Going to throw out pattern. Kaufman takes it at the 46. Defensive back slip. Drew cuts it up at the 35 to the 30. He's heading toward the center of the field at the 10, the 5. Goal line touchdown. 45 yards. The Wildcats answer 30 seconds after Salzburg scores, and it's 27 to 13. 55 yard touchdown pass from Schmidt to Drew Kaufman, his fifth of the season. Four plays, 55. And again, that, that is just that deep out that I said that if you can get the ball out there, the D backs are having trouble keeping their footing. Even at that, though, that's a completion and an easy 10, 15 yard pickup turned into 55 yards and a touchdown. And we have a timeout called by Homer Center. We'll wow. take one with them on an Indiana Regional Medical Center High School Sports Night. Homer Center answers right, right back. We have two touchdowns in the final 49 seconds of the first half, and it's 27-13 Wildcats on the IRMC High School Sports Night WCCS Heritage Conference Football Network. Introducing, oh, there you are. <clears throat> Introducing the card that gives you a better way to pay. You've swiped, you've chipped, but now you can simply tap and go. The first Commonwealth Bank MasterCard contactless card makes checkout simple at millions of locations. Fast, secure, convenient. Tap your first Commonwealth Bank MasterCard contactless card at your favorite checkouts today. How'd he come? Our studio engineer tonight, one of these days, Ward Hilliard, will learn to not to talk when we're coming out of break. We're well, they like to hear them. me, though, Mark. Yeah. I, I have so much to offer. So <laughs> let's see what the Wildcats do here. 27-13. Well, we expected this, but not this late in the, in the first half. Bang, bang, two touchdowns. Wildcats are now going to go for two with a 14-point advantage. Sidecar to the right of Schmidt is Colin Troop, and Ben's going to roll to his right, looking, dumps it off easily. Shane McCoy, two-point conversion. Ben just read it, patient, patient, breaking free the tight end, McCoy, two-point conversion, successful. Well done. Well, well done, and when you have a guy like Ben there, there's a lot of things you can do that other teams can't. He, he just, as he, you said, read the play, 
And he said, you're either going to come after me or you're going to have to guard the tight end. And uh, they decided to try to come at him, and he just dumped it. So 16 seconds on the clock. Are we done now well, for know. the first half? <laughs> <laughs> you might see a squibber here. What do you think? So oh boy, this. Uh, yeah, it was pretty quiet though offensively for a while, but uh, wow, his last couple minutes have just gone crazy. It's good athletes out there. Jim uh, Costello, hello to you, Jim. I don't know if you're watching or uh, listening or both, hopefully both. But he has a question for you, Ward. <laughs> what took so long to get to Bronco Nagurski this year? <laughs> yeah, Jim remembers Bronco. <laughs> Well, I mean, you, you, uh, oh, you well, old we, guys, I mean. I, we, hey, yeah. <laughs> old Sorry, guys. Jim. I, I forgot about my birthday I had last month that uh, was kind of uh, one of those milestones that. J Jim appreciates the finer things in the game. <laughs> Bronco Nikursky was one of them. <laughs> Howard Hopalong Cassidy. Yeah, there's some names. Angelo Barlini, deep for the Trojans. So, uh, Schmidt teeing it up. What a first half for Ben as he moves past Pete Kuda. I can remember when Ian Lee, you know, grabbed yeah. that record and then Jesse took it off of. Uh, yeah, it was just getting peeled yeah. about every two years. Huh? There's, the There's your little squib kick that's loose, but uh, Salzburg jumps on it near their own 45 yard line. For the Trojans, that was Kyle Ressler. And let's see how oh, Mike Glazier you know, plays it you here. You don't sit on it. You burned the Wildcats once, I'm sure they're going to look to try to do that again. They may have some trickery again, as you said before. And I'd have about five guys back deep if yeah. I'm Greg well, Page. He, he's got – oh, I thought that was – nope. He, I thought Ben was deep, but he's not. They yeah. got uh, – Homer, without two regulars, uh, a few fans just uh, tuned in. They lost Justin Walbeck on the game's uh, – First offensive first possession offensive, right. on the first play with a homer center on a, a snap that was mishandled by Ben out of the shotgun at the one yard line of homer center and Salzburg scored off of that. That's when Walbeck was hurt and Mock has been lost, we believe, uh, to a head injury and hopefully he'll be okay. Stats being pressured, all kind of pressure. He's smothered back inside the 35 at the 33 yard line. Shane McCoy, Mason Bell, and Caden Brown all converging yeah. on him, and that is going to be the end of the first half. Wow, some great play in this first half. Both teams with some explosive home run type plays, and the Wildcats a little bit more, and they had to overcome themselves with some uh, critical mistakes too. They will get the ball to start the second half. They head to the locker room with a 16 point lead at the break. It's Homer Center 29. Salzburg 13 on an Indiana Regional Medical Center High School Sports Night. We'll kick off our Colonial Motor Mart and Colonial Toyota Halftime Show. When we come back, we'll recap the first half of action. We'll take a look at the stats and more right here on the WCCS Wildcat and Trojan Football Network. Introducing... Oh, there you are. <clears throat> Introducing the card that gives you a better way to pay. You've swiped, you've chipped, but now you can simply tap and go. The first Commonwealth Bank MasterCard contactless card makes checkout simple at millions of locations. Fast, secure, convenient. Tap your first Commonwealth Bank MasterCard contactless card at your favorite checkouts today.
it means it. They uh, had no success otherwise. Six attempts, one completion, 48 yards. That was the touchdown. So they had 72 on the ground, 48 through the air, 120 yards on the first half of the Trojans. I thought they had more yardage, to be honest, but uh, that's all that's showing up. For Homer Center, Ben Schmidt, average half, nine rushes, 153 yards, two touchdowns, 16 yards on three carries for Colin Troop. Travis Mock, two carries. He had minus one yard. Homer had a total of 14 attempts, 168 rushing yards through the air. Ben Schmidt was 8 of 13 with one touchdown pass and 139 passing yards. So the Wildcats with 168 on the ground, 139 through the air, 307. That's a little better. Good balance for the Wildcats' first half. All right, stats brought to you by First Commonwealth Bank. Time to be first. They have been audited and are assumed to be accurate. 
as compiled by Ward Hilliard. <laughs> the audit is over, Ward. And, well, uh, no, not quite. I made a mistake. Two touchdown passes, not one. I'm sorry. Out of town scoreboard at uh, halftime. 15-0 Marion Center over Northern Cambria in a battle of the unbeatens. And Todd uh, texted me this. Would you believe West Shemokin 26, United 26. That was late in the first half. Hunter Cameron in the first half, Ward. We saw Ben Schmidt with, what, a buck 53? Hunter just about doubled that. 291 wow. yards and four touchdowns for Hunter Cameron against West uh, Shemokin. So they're uh, you give the Marion centers 15 nothing. I just said that over Northern Cambria. If you would start that. paying attention, well, I'm okay, busy here doing all this 29 13. Our score here at the half. Our oh. Colonial Motor Mart Colonial Toyota halftime report continues from Trojan Stadium right after this on the WCCS Wildcat Trojan Football Network. I'm Joe Pittman. Indiana County in the 41st District deserve a senator who knows the issues cares about people, and works hard to improve our quality of life. I will continue to stand for you in Harrisburg. Please vote for me, Joe Pittman, for State Senate on November 3rd. I'm State Representative Jim Struzzi, and I want to wish all of our students, our student athletes, our faculty and school staffs, and your families a great year. We all look forward to better times ahead. I promise I will continue to fight for your rights and your future. Re-elect me, Jim Struzzi, on Election Day. That's right, 6-0, Bishop Carroll nothing. Wow. And we are going to come back. We're going to get caught up, take our final break of the half. We're going to be set for the second half kickoff. When we return, Homer Center will be receiving. They lead Salzburg 29-13 on the WCCS Heritage Conference Football Network.
looking bad there for a while. But, uh, they finally got the ship righted, and uh, some well, the guy that's going to write it is number three, and he just <laughs> did so many things so well there. He just puts them on his back and carries them, doesn't he? Yes, he does. He's uh, fun to watch. They got him back deep with Krajosik and uh, that Travis. You know, that, who we got near us here? Is that near side 14? is Drew Kaufman. Drew Kaufman. I can't get that number in my head yet. Can't get much in my head anymore. Here we go, Mark. All right, <laughs> and Rustler has it teed up. Near side, line drive kick. Kaufman takes it at the 18, heads toward the center of the field. Now far sideline to the 25, runs through one tackle to the 30, to the 35, 40, and he's going to finally be wrestled out of bounds in the Homer Center bench by Gino Bartolini on the far side of the field. So the Wildcats will have pretty good field position to open up this second half. Nice return, pretty well blocked. They formed that wall and he got to the edge, but as close as he could anyway. Put it down at the 41 officially. So Justin Walbeck knocked out of the game. Preliminary report is uh, not a serious injury. We're hoping that's true. Travis Mock, head injury. He was tackled low and then hit high in the head on a uh, punt return. Uh, t and uh, really, we could tell up here it was a hard hit. Jet sweep, and here comes Krajosik, and Krajosik is tackled for a loss in his own backfield back at the 36-yard line. Braden Yard on the stop for the Salzburg Trojans. Right outside linebacker did a nice job of reading that. 6'1", 215 pounds senior. You know that play, it can go for big yardage and then it can do what that one did, which was lose about six. Good defense by yard there. Trojans need a big stand here to start this quarter. They want to change that momentum a little bit. Former Wildcat running back TJ Roser. Thank you for the nice comment on the Broadcast tonight, TJ, former Wildcat running back, standout. Second down at about 18 to go. Out in the flat, they get it to Riley Clevenger, takes it at the 35-40, and he bangs his way out of bounds right down below us on the Salzburg bench. Santino Bartolini met him, and it was Riley trying to deliver the blow, so they get some of that yardage back. About 10 of it, really. Pretty good pickup on that. 45-yard line, so it'll be third down, and about six to go. They need to get to the Trojan 49-yard line. Ben Schmidt gets repositioned as a protector uh, right to left. It's Colin Troop, and he takes the direct snap. Pocket collapses. Ben trying to run through it, and he fumbles the football, and Salzburg gets out of bounds. Let's see if they recovered it inbounds, and the official looks like they're going to give it to Salzburg. Let's see. No signal yet. Let's see. Let's see That's what they're going to do. putting it down right where it went out. 44-yard line. no signal. Yeah, boy. Well, Jim's saying there was a penalty there. I didn't see that. Oh, okay. And then they're talking face mask. So the uh, Boy, that, one of the officials talking to the referee, and they're going to wave off the off flag. The flag. Okay. So whose ball? Homer Centers, evidently. So the Wildcats are going to go three and out to start this second half. That was no uh, yardage on that play for Ben. Still at 153. Home's going to have to punt. Nice job by the Trojans. That's what they wanted. Oh, oh so they are giving it to Salzburg. Uh, no signal at all here. I mean, come on, guys. Wow. Thank you, officials, for doing a lousy job. Yeah, Homer didn't even have their defense out here. Now they have to. Greg Page is beside himself. Well, yeah, they, they got to give them time to get their team on the field here. Nobody, nobody knew what was nobody going Nobody knew who had the ball, <laughs> including everybody in this booth. They never gave a signal. That's a lousy job. I hate to get on the officials. I try to avoid that, but uh, mechanically, that's just not yeah. a good job. Thank oh, you. there we go. <laughs> Thank you. So at the Homer Center 44-yard line, the referee, if you're watching it, you saw it, he uh, signaled Salzburg ball. No kidding. Yeah, oh, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> so the third Wildcat turnover, which won't make 
Greg Page very happy. Well, they're playing a little sloppy, Homer is. Uh, and, uh, you got to give the Trojans credit here. They're still battling. This is exactly what they wanted. 29-13. Three and out and get the ball in decent field position, and they've done all of that. Let's see what they do now. This is taking a while, isn't it? Yeah, why? Gre they're explaining things to Greg Page. Oh, oh okay. Yeah. I would like to see the replay on that. Come on, Zach. <laughs> Aren't we up to speed on replays yet? <laughs> You're not doing the replays yet. It was in the uh, Salzburg bench, but boy, the Salzburg player had to do a great job of corralling that ball yeah, before I, it went he, out of bounds. He, he had to. He had to. I, it's pretty hard to see from where we're at. From the 44 of the Wildcats, split backs behind stats. The give to Bartolini. Bartolini to the 40-yard line for Homer Center. Nick Manzanilla. Welcome back, Nick, who missed a couple of games. And he is back in the lineup tonight. Bartolini about four yards to the 40. Yeah, they're always trying to establish that inside. That's going to open up toss pitches here if they run them. I would expect to see them do that. Uh, Ten and a half minutes remaining in the third quarter. 29-13 Homer Center. Salzburg jumped out early, uh, capitalizing on a Wildcat turnover. But uh, Homer Center bounced back to lead 29-13 at the half. Stats hands it off to Angelo Bartolini. Had an opportunity there, Ward, I think, to bounce it outside, but he didn't. He kind of cut it back. And the Wildcats prevent him from getting to that lead chain. Inside backer Brock Hauser on the tackle. So it'll be third down and about three to go. Football resting right in the center of the football field at Homer Center's 37-yard line. Big uh, set of a couple plays here for Homer Center now. Playing shorthanded uh, on defense. Anthony Rowland in for Travis Mock. Justin Walbeck, their leading tackler on the shelf early in this game, as we've talked about. Wildcats show blitz under center stats with split backs behind him. Wingman to the right, a uh, uh, flag from the line judge. A illegal procedure will back the Trojans up five oh, yards. Man. I hate to be a broken record, but I will. Just drive killers. Five yard penalties, but they take all your momentum, put you five yards deeper. You had a play in mind, you wanted to run it. I don't know why it took so long for them to get that play off, but it hurt them. We'll see if the Wildcats can make them pay for that. Third down and a short seven. Football now at the 42 of Homer Center. That Wildcat front wall nose guard is Caden Brown. Nick Manzanilla, the left tackle. And on the right side, is that uh, big Mike Yunt? Uh, no, I don't think it is. It's actually Vinny Taglietti in there. It is. Yeah, he's been playing very well. Third down and seven and another flag. And what do we have this time? Timeout by Salzburg. Indiana Regional Medical Center High School Sports Night coverage continues with 9.22 left in the third quarter. Score, Homer Center 29, Salzburg 13 on the WCCS Wildcat and Trojan Football Network. The Indiana County Technology Center Adult Education Program offers a variety of career pathways for adults. Whether you're looking for a new career or simply just learn new skills, ICTC's selection of diverse programs will help you achieve your goals. Our programs are tailored to fit your needs and offer industry-specific certification opportunities. Call today at 724-349-6700 to find out how we can help you become more successful. <laughs> oh, I got, I got a second uh, suspension. Abusive officials. I haven't been able to say that about any human being. That one was completely over your head, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. All right, here we go after the timeout by Salzburg. Third down. And about seven to go. Single back motion man, and they give it to Ressler around the left corner. And a nice tackle coming in, knifing in Ben Schmidt of the Homer Center Wildcats. So Ben doing it on both sides. No gain on that play, so it's going to be fourth down and about eight. Well, make it seven to go. Well, that's why Ben's out there, and that's why he's playing up. 
on those end positions just to cut that off. It did a great job. Looks like Salzburg may punt it away here. Yeah, I was going to say. Although here comes freshman quarterback Luke Woodring. Yeah, there's. 5'9", 150 pound there's player some. who's got some time last week. He was three of eight with an interception. Ah, uh, there's mischief afoot here. Oh, but he's lining up double wing left and Bartolini from the shotgun. Well, now uh, Woodring uh, receiver to the left boundary. Near side receiver is Santino Bartolini. And taking the direct snap, rolling right is uh, Gino Bartolini. Throws on the run off of the hands of Angelo Bartolini on the coverage for the Homer Center Wildcats. Roland, Drew Kaufman, and Salzburg going to turn it over on downs. It was there, Ward. Yeah, it was a, a great effort, just a little high. And, and that would have been a spectacular catch, but it was a, a ball that could have been caught. Nice job by... Uh, both sides. I thought they, that Salzburg executed pretty well, just didn't get the, the big catch. Homer defended well. Break for the Wildcats. Now they get the ball back. And again, I'll go back to it. That five yard penalty just killed that drive. They could have ran the ball a couple times and picked that first down up. So Homer center at their own 42. Receiver near side is Drew Kaufman. Ben takes the direct snap, hands it off to Colin Troop. Nothing doing there. On the tackle, Angelo Bartolini for the Homer Center Wildcat, or for the Salzburg Trojans. It'll be second down and about 10 to go. Trojans aren't going anywhere, are they? They're hanging tough. Blairsville's not going anywhere either. Ward, they're trailing purchase line 42 to nothing. Uh, it's, it's, it looks like a track meet on there. and It's mainly red and white going down the field. Second down, 10 to go for Homer Center. Ben Schmidt again repositions Colin, Colin Troop, who's in there for the injured Justin Walbeck. And Ben, read option, nope, play action pass, gonna throw deep down the left sideline. Drew Kaufman hauls it in at the 25, tackled at the 20 yard line. That's picture perfect from Ben Schmidt to Drew Kaufman on the tackle for Salzburg, Rocco Bartolini. And it's first down, but oh, hold the fort. There's a flag way upfield. And that's coming back on a hold. 37 yard pass and run. My eyes or took not. me with the ball to the left yeah, and I did too. not see the laundry on the field. My apologies for that, but it was a beautifully executed pass. Didn't yeah. take very long either. That's why I'm surprised there's a hold on that. Michael Burdick saying something in our headset. What was that, Michael? Okay. Michael Burdick, our producer of Homer Center Sports. Thanks to our video crew tonight, led by Zachary Vogt, Homer Center grad, IUP student, normally doing IUP football this time of year. Westchester Ward with a bizarre announcement. Did you hear that the other day? No, I did not. Second down and 20 from the 32. Schmidt with pressure coming. He eludes that pressure. Rules uh, to the right, looking, looking, throwing downfield for Krajosik and incomplete. Wow, some improvising from Schmidt. Good coverage downfield on Krajosik. On the coverage, it was 32, Santino Bartolini. So it'll be third down and 20. Westchester, by the way, a couple of days ago, canceled all sports for the academic year right through the spring. Oh, man. And everybody's wondering. That's we realize radical. things change day to day, but that's a little bit. That's uh, radical. If I'm an athlete at Westchester, I'm thinking, yeah. let me out of here. That's going to hurt it, too. You're going to recruit out there? Third down and 20. Schmidt out in the flat to Riley Clevenger at the 32, 35. Makes a little move at the 40, but down he goes. He'll gain about eight or nine yards and be well short of the first down. Braden Yard on the nice tackle in the open field to drop Riley. Riley did a pretty good job of uh, making a little jump cut, jump cut at the 35 and picked up some nice yardage, but they were faced, they were behind the chains, Ward. Yeah, they needed 20. 20 yards is a lot to get. You know, Homer's had a couple plays where they've done it. That time wasn't to be. And they are putting enough pressure on Ben that it uh, gets him out of the pocket and has, forces him to move. David Stoller back deep to receive the punt from Michael Krajosik. Long snapper Shady McCoy. Snap is true. And Krajosik's going to roll around the right uh, end. And there's a lot of red jerseys to get through, and he's not going to get the first down. He stops shy of midfield. On the tackle, it was... Braden Yard again, so uh, Salzburg was not fooled, Ward. Kind of a surprise call there. Uh, Krajosik 
perhaps the fastest Wildcat on the roster, but not fast enough to pick up the necessary yardage, and he needed a bunch, and he didn't get enough. He was about four yards shy. You wonder uh, if that was a called play or, you know, that Michael is on his own back there if he sees nothing on the, on either end that he has a room to run. So that's that's curious when you got a two-touchdown lead. You want to take a chance like that in your own territory. So at the Wildcat 48, and the give is to Angelo Bartolini. And he's up the middle for some good yardage down near the 40. Drew Kaufman on the stop for the Homer Center Wildcats. 28 yards for Angelo tonight on seven halls. 29-13 Homer Center with the advantage as we reach the halfway point of this third quarter. We have had no scoring in the quarter. Most of it played in Homer territory. Correct. <laughs> Braden Stats under center, Tressler or Russler in uh, motion behind the formation, and they give it to Bartolini. Not a lot of running room there. Shane McCoy and Caden Brown converge to tackle him, and it'll be third down and about two to go. Good defense. Was that Gino on that carry? Yep, Gino okay. Bartolini. No gain on that. If you say Bartolini, you have a pretty good you're shot pretty, of being yeah, right. Yeah, you got five of them out there. I'm telling you, Little Italy and Salzburg. That's, <laughs> yeah, you. Have you ever been there at all those Italian restaurants? Oh, my goodness sakes. There's about 12 or 14. One or two I've been to. You can't get to all of those restaurants in Little Italy. Mike and Mark Bartolini, the fathers of the Bartolini players on this roster and they are good athletes and now a timeout going to be called by who? By Salzburg. Ooh, you don't want to waste those. They're down to one. 502 remaining in the third quarter. Timeout Salzburg. Indiana Regional Medical Center High School Sports Night coverage continues. Homer Center maintains their 29 to 13 lead on the WCCS Heritage Conference Football Network. No matter who you are or where you are, CNB Bank makes it easy to take care of life's necessities, like paying Uncle Rick back for lunch, or depositing that paycheck for dog sitting. And even if you prefer to bank, the more traditional way, we still rock that too. Welcome to CNB Bank. Experience better banking at CNB Bank. I don't know what the rules were. I think everybody got two tickets. Yeah, that is definitely not Indiana. I have no idea what that was. Yeah, that is not Indiana. We do not have that big of a team. We don't have a stadium. That it's Wolverine. I think that's a college game, bro. <laughs> no bumper. Out of the timeout, Stats hands it off. And Angelo Bartolini runs through a tackle of Roland, and he breaks a second tackle, and he's heading for the end zone for a touchdown. That is not good tackling by Homer Center. They did not wrap up. And much like we saw Ben Schmidt running over red jerseys, that time it was Angelo Bartolini running through tackles for his second rushing touchdown of the season, and the Trojans are right back in it. It's 29-19 with 4.51 to play in the third quarter. 47-yard run for Bartolini. That was a biggie, and uh, that, that hurt <laughs> for Homer Center, but that's what the Trojans were doing. They kept Homer bottled up, and that's why you don't like to take chances when you have the lead. When you're in your own territory, not a good gamble, and it came back to bite them. So the Trojans trailing by 10 will try to get it to a one-possession game with a two-point conversion here. They line up in an eye formation behind Braden Stats, and Braden Yard is the fullback. They hand it to Angelo Bartolini, and he's held out of the end zone, and he's held out by a good effort by Ben Schmidt. So the two-point conversion fails, but the Trojans cut into the lead. 4.51 to play in the third quarter. The fake punt backfires on Homer Center. It's 29-19 on an IRMC High School Sports Night on the WCCS Wildcat and Trojan Football Network. Was that 41 or 47 yard run? I said 47 I 38. because of 38. Yeah. The scoreboard at 47. That's what. Could
Rossler to kick off for Salzburg. At Trojan Stadium. 38 yard run officially for Angelo Bartolini. The scoreboard had 47. That's what threw me off a little bit. But uh, our crack statistician, color analyst Ward Hilliard, was <laughs> right on that. Hi, Ms. Ross. Uh... But outstanding run by Bartolini, but not good tackling by Homer Center. Here's a squib kick. Wildcats trying to get on it, and they do finally at the 26 yard line. And here comes Ben Schmidt. Ben Schmidt reverses course, runs into his own man, and they finally. Uh, plow him under at about the 28 yard line and coming in and finishing him off was Kyle Ressler. So the Wildcats will start at their own 28 yard line. I've been impressed with Salzburg's special teams play. The kick coverage I think has really yeah, been good. Yeah, they got a, a, a Ressler's an excellent kicker. Kyle Rossler, also. Rossler, I'm sorry, but the, yeah, he can, he can get it out there. He's got a good leg. Jump so down to center. a field goal, they could use it. 29 yard line is gonna be the starting point for Homer Center. Once again, they need to regroup and get the... Three offense. turnovers again tonight, Ward. Yeah, uh, that's not good. Homer Center, last year I talked about this a couple of games ago, uncharacteristically for a Greg Page ball club, they were a minus 10 for the season. They entered tonight after a tough week against Penn's Manor, a minus one, and they've added to that. You hate to be a negative if oh. you're gonna plan on being a good football team and a good playoff team. Schmidt with an empty backfield, receivers all over the yard, and he puts Drew Kaufman in motion behind the formation left to right, and Schmidt opens things up. He's going to keep it <laughs> to the 40, to the 45, 50 down the left sideline. See you later, I do believe. They're trying to catch him, but he runs through that tackle of Salzburg's Rocco Bartolini and into the end zone for a touchdown. That's 71 yards for Ben Schmidt with 426 remaining in the third quarter, and it's 35-19. This kid is fun to watch. Well, <laughs> like you said, if he gets into secondary, it's lights out. He made a nice little cut to the outside, and then he just turned on the Jets, and he was gone. He just ran by the pursuit. That's just the thing of beauty. This guy is so He's good. Over. Now, you, you know what? You talked about last year in the turnovers. You keep, keep in mind, Ben was hurt most of those games. True. Not truly the Ben Schmidt we see in here tonight. Over 200 yards rushing oh, now, right? Well over 224, I have. He's going to attempt the extra point. He catches his breath out of the snap of Shady McCoy. The holder is Drew Kaufman. Snap is put down, and the kick is up, and the kick is good. 426 remaining in the third quarter. Cats have 36 on the board. Ben Schmidt's in the weight room again, isn't he? Doing a lot of heavy lifting here this evening. Over 200 yards rushing, 224 unofficially, and the Cats lead 36-19 over Salzburg on the WCCS Heritage Conference Football Network. You're not watching the stream of this, are you, Michael? Yep, a kick's already going on. Oh, that's a good tackle. Oh, good tackle. As we come back to play, Rocco Bartolini, sideline left return forced out of bounds by Mason Bell on the kick coverage team and it will be first down Salzburg, just shy of their own 30-yard line. That Bob ought to be proud of him. Boy, that's textbook tackle. Shoulder into him and drove him backwards. Drive starting with 417 left here in the third quarter. Brennan Mogul in defensively. Maybe, maybe for Ben just to give him a break here. Yep, that's what happened. 
stats, or that's, uh, is that stat? Yeah, it looks like stats, still a quarterback for the Trojans. And he hands it off to Gino Bartolini off the left side in the hard nose running. He's a boy, isn't he? Oh, he's Bartolini, a good, he's a solid good runner. running back. Tackled by Ada, or Drew Kaufman of the Homer Center Wildcats along with inside backer Brock Hauser. Second down and five for the Trojans. It's just looking at the most points in a game between these two teams. 78 uh, back in 2014. Homer Center won 50 to 28. 55 on the board, so we have a ways to go to reach that yeah. mark. But nothing would shock me. Not the way this is going. Second down, five to go. Ball on the left hash toward the Homer Center bench. They operate left to right out of our ST Bank broadcast booth. Gino Bartolini around the left edge. And first down yardage over the 40. Tackled by Michael Krajosik, who came up from his cornerback position along with Michael Yunt. And we have a whistle and uh, we'll see. Well, just moving, just the, moving chains, the chains. I'm not sure. I thought I heard a whistle in my he did. headset. 3.20 to play here in the third quarter. Homer Center with right now a comfortable 36-19 lead, but we, uh, <laughs> it's comfortable. I'm These sure guys. Greg Page isn't comfortable on the far sideline. Yeah. First and 10 Trojans, new set of downs. Power eye formation, tight formation for the Trojans, and they hand it off to Bartolini, and I think that's Shane Shady McCoy that has them, and he does for a loss behind the chains. Back to about the 39-yard line. Let's see where they put it down, just shy of the 40. So it'll be a loss of two. United, uh, Hunter Cameron Ward, 34-33 United over uh, Shemokin. Cameron has 365 yards rushing uh, and five touchdowns. I think he's got a few carries. Injured to yard, Brady Yard limping uh, off. That's not a good sign for the That's Trojans. an injury, a cramp situation, oh, perhaps. Could be a cramp. Just a, oh yeah, yeah, that's cramp. Yep. <laughs> he down like he got shot. Braden Yard, son of J T Yard, good baseball player, good pitcher, this is a good outstanding athlete. athlete. I'm so happy to see this Trojan roster with 30 plus players on it. You know, yeah, they're one of the. Uh, middle mid mid range teams as far as roster size in the Heritage Conference. The give and with the football is Angelo Bartolini and Brennan Mogul on the stop for the Homer Center Wildcats. Ward, we have not called Trayvon McFarland's name, and actually I see now he's down on the sideline injured. But even when he was in there in the first half, no, they didn't were carry. not using him for whatever reason. I, I don't know what the, the is he trying to is. stretch out a cramp. See him right down on the yeah, bench. Yeah. He's leaning on the player there, stretching his legs. It's third down and just about 11 to go, and a timeout. Salzburg has just burned their final timeout. With 83 seconds left in the third quarter, we'll take a short break as well on an IRMC High School Sports Night from our S&T Bank broadcast booth. Relationship banking one customer at a time. It's Homer Center 36 and the Salzburg Trojans 19 on the WCCS Heritage Conference Football Network. I'm Joe Pittman. Indiana County and its neighbors in the 41st District are Western Pennsylvania. Hardworking, independent people. The energy supplier to millions. We need a voice in Harrisburg and I humbly ask for your vote for Senator from the 41st District. Do we have a camera down below or not? Bork Farms, they're celebrating their one-year anniversary. Grab some meat on the run at Bork's. A couple of roasts, going to have one of those on Sunday. They now have some pork products and bacon, too, and some excellent jams. They found a vendor. Really, really neat little store on Neal Road in Homer City. Thank you, Dave Bork and the Bork family. Bork Farms for bringing Homer Center football, um, along with our other sponsors, uh, everyone's way. We thank our video partners, too, making tonight's stream Available, we hope you're enjoying that. Third down and 11 from the shotgun, Braden Stats 
takes the snap, rolls to his right, pressure coming. They look to set up a screen maybe. The pass hauled in short of the first down at the 47 yard line by Gino Bartolini. He downed himself uh, basically and it'll cut that distance where they were behind the chains. It was like fourth and a dozen. It's gonna be fourth and, what do you say, about six to go. Yeah, cut it in half. That was uh, not the intent of that pass, I think. <laughs> they wanted a little screen set up, but Homer kind of blew that up. So they got the fourth and six, and they're going to go for it. Under a minute to play here in this third quarter, and Gino Bartolini going to go from the shot. Or uh, no, it's Stats. Let's see who they're going to snap it to. It's going to be Stats, and he rolls to his left, which had Bartolini throwing the ball tonight, too. And the pass is intercepted by Michael Krajosic, his second of the season. And he returns it for about five yards to the 47-yard line, maybe the 46. The receiver was there, Staller, the intended receiver, and Krajosic basically reached in and stole it away. The pass may be a little bit behind Staller. Just a little. That's a lot of mustard on it, but uh, just didn't quite get it. And well played by Krajosic. Give him credit. He played the ball beautifully and made the pick. So they got one of those turnovers back to, on that play. Let's see yes, what they Homer did. can do here. 32 Try seconds left in this. Burn this quarter and get into the fourth. At their own 46 yard line. Drew Kaufman near side, Wildcats with an H back. I think that's Shady McCoy or Brennan Mogul it is actually. And they give it to Colin Troop running very low to the <laughs> ground trying to maintain his balance and son of a gun if he didn't stumble ahead for four yards and right to midfield and I think we have just witnessed the final play of the third quarter with the Wildcats leading 36 to 19. I'd like to thank Luxembourg Jewelers for presenting the third quarter. Fourth quarter action straight ahead. Homer Center 36, Salzburg 19 on the WCCS Wildcat and Trojan Football Network. Maybe you've heard of the Colonial Experience, but did you know that that begins before you even walk in the door? At ShopColonialCars.com, we bring you a convenient way to begin your car shopping experience. Browse our selection of vehicles, and then come on in for the rest of the Colonial Experience. That's a lifetime warranty, lifetime state inspections, and more on your new vehicle, and a promise to keep working for you, even after you drive off the lot. Because giving you unparalleled service is what we do. ShopColonialCars.com. Introducing, oh, there you are. <clears throat> Introducing, the card that gives you a better way to pay. You've swiped, you've chipped, but now you can simply tap and go. The first Commonwealth Bank MasterCard contactless card makes checkout simple at millions of locations. Fast, secure, convenient. Tap your first Commonwealth Bank MasterCard contactless card at your favorite checkouts today. Play by Matthew Izzo of the Trojans. Izzo, a junior 5'11", 190-pound linebacker, but the Wildcats move the chains, and right now it's about ball control and working yep. the clock. It's maintaining possession, running the clock, and I, love, I like watching Colin Troop. He looks like a really potentially good running back. He's making some nice cuts, protecting the ball, finding the hole, all the things you got to do. 5'9", 173 ponder. We'll have both coaches on video and radio on our post-game show. First and 10 over center. Schmidt going to keep it on the read option to the 35 <laughs> to the 30. Steps over a tackler down the center of the field, heading toward the goal post. And guess what? Another touchdown for Homer Center's Ben Schmidt. 43 yards. The kid is sensational. He's heading toward 300 yards rushing tonight. Big, big night. Can he pass Jesse Lee tonight? Well, there's probably not enough game for that but it is something special to watch yeah, and it's 40 
two to 19 with 11 16 left in the he game runs the reads option so well and then when he sees the gap the thing i like about what ben does is he's got great speed and that's what he does he just cranks it up and goes and the defense just can't react to it plus he's so big <laughs> he's just special runner this is really fun to watch out of the hole to Drew Kaufman, snap a little bit low, but it's put down by Drew, and Ben's kick is up, and Ben's kick is good. So the Wildcats, I think, have uh, opened up enough of a cushion to put this thing away finally with 11-16 to play in the football game. It's 43-19, to Homer Center on the WCCS Wildcat and Trojan Football Network. 40, 43 on that? Yeah. Stadium. We hope you're enjoying tonight's broadcast and video stream. Schmidt's kick is away at the 11-yard line. It's Salzburg Trojans' David Stoller up over the 20, 25 up the right sideline, tackled by Shane McCoy. Shane would get consideration from Homer Center's perspective, I think, as player of the game. He's played really well. I mean, on the I'm talking from a defensive standpoint um, because uh, offensively, I think we know who that offensive player of the game is. Still debating. Yeah. Hey, let's update Ben Schmidt. 267 yards rushing. He now has 2,732. He's blown by Pete Kuda, third on the all-time list. 28.79 for Ian Lee. We'll get uh, Jim McLaughlin can do that math in a hurry. <laughs> we'll make him our uh, math mutation. There's somebody better than me. I'll tell you. Here's stats. Booting to his left, in trouble, steps up, makes a nice move, but now he's dragged down by Caden Brown of the Homer Center Wildcats. There's another sack for Brown, who's really been a fine, I'm sure the coaching staff, they're really thrilled for this kid that he came back out for football, and he's making the most of it. That sack, a loss of two, back to the 24 and a half yard line. We'll call it second down and 12. Yeah, good penetration by Caden, and then a good short tackle there, just didn't let him get away. A lot of new people out there. Homer's uh, had to slide some people in due to injury. They're playing well. Angelo Bartolini trying to get to the edge. Drew Kaufman has him high and throws him down in front of the Wildcat bench as he approaches the 30-yard line. So he'll gain about six yards on that play. Angelo Bartolini entering tonight's game, 292 yards rushing on 37 attempts, 7.9 average. Had a touchdown. He added to that total. He had 74 yards tonight. So he's Ten over carries. 300 for the season. This the Salzburg Trojans' fifth game. Hey, there's Chuck Clark and Ab. They don't look very happy in that uh, <laughs> broadcast booth. It's a long night for those guys. I know the feeling. We've been there. 42 <laughs> nothing. I'm assuming that's fourth quarter with a mercy rule. Third down, seven to go for Salzburg in their home reds tonight. Looks sharp. Wingman to the left and Stats rolling to his left, throws underneath, has a receiver for a first down up the left sideline, goes Tristan Ressler and uh, Rollin can't tackle him down the sideline. It's gonna go for a 69 yard catch and run touchdown pass. And with 9.27 to play in the game, it's now 43-25, stop the press. Salzburg says this one's not over yet. Homer uh, D-back had a chance to knock him out of bounds and end that run, but did not get enough on it, on the hit to get him out, and not down he went. So 
<laughs> He's playing Trojans ain't quitting. He, I, I'm sure Mike Leisure is happy about that. Not the score, but the effort. Tristan Rossler, 69 yards. And now he'll attempt, oh, well, they're gonna go for two. Homer Center. Uh, Their tackling Tackling has suspect. been suspect, yes. <laughs> gonna go for two. They have stats under center with Angelo Bartolini and Gino in the backfield, the two brothers, and Stats rolls to his right, looking, throwing deep in the back of the end zone, hauled in by Stoller, nicely done by David Stoller in the right corner of the end zone, and it's 43-28, two-possession game, or 43-27 is the score, with 9.27 to play in the football game. Don't go away, why would you? Indiana Regional Medical Center High School Sports Night coverage continues from Trojan Stadium. Well done, Salzburg, 69-yard hookup stats to Tristan Rossler gets them back within a couple of scores on the WCCS Wildcat and Trojan Football Network. Rejoining you, three plays, 73, or three plays, 73 yards. It took a buck 39 for the Trojans. Drive summaries all night long, driven by Colonial Motor Mart and Colonial Toyota of Indiana. Thank you, C.J. Spadafore. Exciting part here, Mark, onside kick time. And there it is. It's coming uh, near side. You don't have to touch it, but the Wildcats jump on it. It did not go 10 yards. That's the reason I said you do not have to touch it. But the, uh, Drew Kaufman with those good hands jumped on it, nonetheless, at the 47-yard line. And that's where the Wildcats will take over. We already have one rusher in the Heritage <laughs> Conference with over 300 yards, Hunter Cameron. And Ben Schmidt's not far away, is he? If they keep him in, that last score might keep Ben in the ball game. I thought they'd take him out, but uh, you're only up 16. That's Homer Center will host the um, Purchase Line Red Dragons next week. That's a that's a tall order too. That team, Forty-two nothing licking on the Bobcats tonight. That game's a final. Team. They're a good team out there. Led by another good running back. Yeah, Josh Seister. Here we go, Homer Center from the Trojan. 47, and Schmidt is in there at quarterback, looking to pass. He's going to load up and throw deep down the left sideline. Can they run under it? They do at the 25-yard line, cutting it back toward the goal post. It is Drew Kaufman, and the Wildcats are on the board. One play, 47 yards, just <laughs> seconds after Salzburg scores. Homer Center has 49 on the board. It's 49-27. Ben Schmidt, not with his legs, with his arm that time, and it's Schmidt at it again. I've seen a peanut stand and I've seen a rubber band. I've seen a needle wink its eye, but I have never, ever seen anything like this. Homer Center. Ben Schmidt can score whenever he wants to, Mark. That's what it looks like out here. Beautiful pass. They're going to try to kick it, I think, here and put 50 yeah. on Let the board. Salzburg has been allowing a lot of points, 33 and a half, and uh, Homer's been scoring a lot. They are gonna go for two. Twin receivers near side, protector to the left of Ben is Colin Troop, who's I think that accommodated himself well tonight. Ben gonna throw slant in pattern, little bump in the end zone, but no flag intended for Krajosik, so the two point conversion fails. Fans will like to tell you that quality health care is a short trip away when you visit IRMC at Chestnut Ridge, comprehensive outpatient facility in Blairsville. IRMC at Chestnut Ridge, 
Old Route 22 next to Chestnut Ridge Golf Resort in Blairsville. IRMC at Chestnut Ridge. Get in, get out, get better. We're going to get out, come back quickly. Right here on the WCCS Wildcat and Trojan Football Network, 49-27 Homer Center on an IRMC High School Sports Night. Every day, businesses find ways to face whatever challenge that day brings. Communities find new ways to come together, and families find more ways to stay connected. At First Commonwealth, we're ready to help you along the way, to help businesses take care of business, to help strengthen communities, and to help our neighbors look forward with confidence to whatever each day brings. We're ready, we care, and we're here to help. I'm State Representative Jim Struzzi, and I want to wish all of our students, our student athletes, our faculty and school staffs, and your families a great year. We all look forward to better times ahead. I promise I will continue to fight for your rights and your future. Re-elect me, Jim Struzzi, on Election Day. Schmidt has it teed up for Homer Center. He's going to sleep good tonight. I don't know what he ices, his arm or his legs. I don't know, but he's, gonna, he's been doing it all tonight. And no ran kick, and it's a good one. Angelo Bartolini at the 11-yard line up the center of the field, runs through a couple of tackles to the 30, to the 35, and uh, we'll see where they put him down. It was Cole McAnally, promising sophomore. Saw Cole on the JV game against Penn's Manor, played very well. You know, I think that's a young man, Ward, that Homer Center is going to have to find a way on both right, sides of the ball to get him on the field. On the field. I, I agree, Mo. I've seen him a couple of times, and he, I can just see there's talent there. you got to get that on the field. I, I really like what I see from him, just like Colin Troop. Two very good young runners here. 9.08 remaining. Salzburg going to start at their own 38. Stats under center. Going to hand it off up the middle. Gino Bartolini, big hole, and into Homer Center territory. Down to about the 47-yard line. That'll be a gain of about 15. They put it down at the 48 on the tackle. Drew Kaufman for Homer Center. Salzburg not going to go away quietly. You can <laughs> they keep playing, don't they? 82 yards for uh, Gino. Roland made the tackle, and I'm sure he didn't want to make that tackle. You get that big horse coming at you. 210 pounds. Gino Bartolini again. This time the Wildcats defended a lot better. Shane Shady McCoy, yet another tackle. I wouldn't be surprised. What do you think, Jim? Double figures? Uh, pretty close to it, and he's had to step in. Justin Walbeck knocked out of this game early. Travis Mock uh, as well. So we'll ask the coach about the two key players for Homer Center that were uh, shelved early in this football game. Certainly from uh, the long-term uh, standpoint of the season, you hope they're gonna be okay. Give to Angelo Bartolini, high tackle attempt. Somebody missed him, and then another jersey attempt. They finally get him down inside the 40 at the 39-yard line. Brock Hauser or Mason Bell, was it uh, Mason Bell on the tackle? And Shady McCoy again. But a gain of about eight, gonna be third down. And a yard. Football at the 39-yard line, favoring the right hash. Trojans operate right to left. Protector to the left is Angelo Bartolini. They have Rossler in motion, and they're going to give it to Gino. Gino lowers the shoulder inside the 35 to the 33, and a Wildcat is on his back getting up slowly. Let's see who that is. I think it was the tackler. Guess who? Shane Shady McCoy. Thank Michael Burdig, our engineer back at 9th in Philly. His great work once again. 34-33 was the last score we had. United uh, leading West Shemokin. Cameron with 365 yards. Might be more by now. Angelo Bartolini picking his way. Fumbled the football. It's on the turf. They dive for it. I think Homer Center has it. At the 35-yard line, pretty sure the Wildcats came up with it. Anthony Rowland. Pouncing on that football. And uh, let's see. They haven't given it to Homer Center. Ben Schmidt certainly thought Roland had it. And uh, it's going to be no game. No game. <laughs> Salzburg ball. I didn't see any, again, no sign from the official, huh? Nope. Yeah. 
So a loss of a yard after all that. Second down and 11, football at the 35-yard line. Under center stats, Rossler in motion. We haven't seen McFarland this second half, I don't believe. I don't stats rolling, throwing, incomplete. Throwing against his body. I know you like that. Ward rolling to your left, the old right-handed thrower, and it was too tall for Tristan Rossler. So with 6.20 remaining in the football game, Homer Center leading 49-27. to The Trojans face a third down and 11 at the Homer Center 35-yard line. Yeah, that ball was very catchable there. That was not Stats' fault. Uh, receiver just couldn't get his hands on it. Had to come up a little bit for it, but the uh, ball, I'm sure he'd tell you, I should have had that. Near side receivers, David Stoller matching up on him as the cornerback for Homer Center, Michael Krajosik, a sophomore. And they're going to hand it off, and uh, Shady McCoy blitzed, almost had uh, Rossler, but he avoided uh, Shady, but didn't gain much. Got inside the 35. Vinny Taglietti finished him off, limited him to a three-yard gain, and the Trojans will be faced with fourth and eight from the Homer Center 33. Was that Wrestler? Okay. Wrestler, Wrestler, yep. Wrestler carried that, okay. I haven't seen a lot of the sweeps. I would have thought you'd have seen more power sweeps, you know, yeah. full house sweeps, and they haven't run them much. Uh, just Fourth down and eight. Stats goes under center. Tight formation, Bartolini. Gino, the fullback, now twin uh, double slot to the right. And slipping his stats, and he goes down back near the 40-yard line. Just lost his footing. We've seen a lot of that on the pressure. Ben Schmidt from the edge. And I think what happened, stats tried avoiding Ben stepping up and just lost his footing. Yep. It's pretty much covered it, Mark. Went back, tried to plant his right foot down. It went. He wasn't going to get away from Ben, though. Ben pretty much had him corralled. He had to throw that away at best. No chance. Homer takes over. Pretty good opportunity here to ice the game. We talked on the way out and you know, we'd like to see a little bit of the old eye, power eye formation from the Wildcats just to run on occasion. This would be a good time to do that, but they're going to run the spread like they always do. What do I know? Schmidt. The quarterback, Troop in the backfield, and they hand it to Colin. Colin, nice read there. Right. Comes near side, gets a block from Kurjosic. 45, 50, first down, Homer Center into Trojan territory. Beautiful run by Colin Troop. He really read that uh, beautifully. Santano, uh, Santino Bartolini on the tackle. I like the patience of Colin Troop, and he got a nice little block from Kurjosic Ward and was a very patient runner, and it paid off for 11 yards. Yeah, he read the block. Nice job by uh, Michael Krajosik on the block there. Set him up. Another five yards. Football at the Trojan. 49. Ball on the right hash. Schmidt from the gun. Troop protector. Or running back to his right. And Ben, read option, hands it to Colin. Colin runs into a Trojan that time and making that tackle, Braden Stats. So they'll lose a yard. Good defense there for the team wearing red and white. Yeah, Cullen thought he could break it outside, but Stats was right there. He ran right into him, and that time didn't see the field as well. Seven touchdowns in the game tonight for Homer Center. Ben Schmitz had his fingerprints in each and every one of them. He's rushed for four and passed for three. Second down and 11. Otherwise, he's having kind of an off night. Receiver <laughs> near side is Michael Krajosik. Schmidt from the shotgun, takes the direct snap, hands it off to Troop. Troop up the middle to the 45 of Salzburg, and it'll set up third down and about six to go. On the tackle for the Salzburg Trojans, Colton Smith-Pletz. 5'9", 170 pounder. Wildcats at home next Friday against Purchase Line. We'll be on the air at 620. Coming up on our first Commonwealth Bank postgame show, we'll have radio replays and interviews with both coaches. We'll grab them from down on the field. If I can find the wireless mic in this maze. It's in here somewhere. It's here. I <laughs> saw it once. <laughs> I, I know you took it down there to test it. Schmidt going to keep it. Schmidt to the 40, Schmidt to the 38-yard line for a first down. Hanging on was Angelo Bartolini. 
and give Ben seven on that carry. No, there it is behind us. 274. 274 yards rushing. We'll audit these over the weekend. And I think they're going to take Ben out. Yes, they are. Three minutes oh. left in the football game, and Cole McAnally will run the offense, the promising sophomore. See, we ask and we yeah, get. Don't make a liar out of us now, Cole. Come on, buddy. <laughs> First and 10 from the 38. Read option, hands it off to Troop. Troop around the left end, delivers a little blow inside the 35 down to the 33-yard line. Luke Woodring, the freshman, on the tackle for the Salzburg Trojans. You know, you, you're leading 49-27. You know, yeah, I know it could be construed as you know, rubbing it in a little bit, but I'd like to see them uh, allow McAnaldi to throw his first varsity touchdown pass. Or not touchdown pass, but pass period. Oh, you are getting greedy now. Yeah, the <laughs> touchdown pass is greedy. He may settle in, see what he does here. Second down and about four to go. Doing a nice job of clock management here, letting it run. Yep. They read option, and Cole's going to keep it. Dances inside to 30, bounces it outside, runs oh. through a tackle to the 20, the 15, the 10, 5, touchdown, Cole McAnaldi. I told you this kid needs to be on do, the field. Do we know what we're talking about or what? 33-yard <laughs> touchdown run. The sophomore's first varsity, no, second, I believe, right? Did he score earlier? I, I'll have to look that up. But anyway, it's 55-27 as Cole McAnaldi, a 33-yard run. Good for him. What a nice cutback, too. Second of the season. Yeah, I thought he scored out at United. Oh, okay. I th or maybe it was West Shimoka. So, anyway, the Wildcats on the board, and they're over 50 tonight. And he's going to try to kick it now. We have 82 on the board. I think that's a new record in this series. Snap put down, and Cole McAnulty's kick is up, and Cole McAnulty's kick is good. So the sophomore Seven pays points. attention to the senior, Ben Schmidt. What you can do, I can do. He runs for 33 and kicks the extra point, and it's 56-27. Homer center with the big lead over the Salzburg Trojans. Wow. This goes on and on, doesn't it? We hope you're enjoying it on an Indiana Regional Medical Center High School Sports Night on the WCCS Heritage Conference Football Network been involved in a collision or accident, call the Collision Repair Specialist, Petroff's A1 Auto Body, a family-owned business serving the community since 1946. Call Petroff's A1 Auto Body and Climber, the Collision Repair Specialist, at 724-254-9417. I'm Joe Pittman. Indiana County and its neighbors in the 41st District are Western Pennsylvania. Hardworking, independent people, the energy supplier to millions. We need a voice in Harrisburg, and I humbly ask for your vote for Senator from the 41st District. Ben Schmidt's kick goes out of bounds at the 15-yard line. I think they're going to get him off the field. I don't know why they have him kicking it. I uh, got a text in the booth uh, from my one of my brothers. He wants to know if maybe Schmidt just lost his job like Marc-Andre Fleury did when Matt Murray <laughs> came in. I don't think it's quite that severe here. <laughs> Jim McLaughlin think, uh, thinks uh, Flurry's coming back. I wouldn't rule that out, He's actually. He's going to Ottawa. They'll get him up in Ottawa, and then they'll throw, have a multiplayer deal and get him back to Pittsburgh. <laughs> new new uh, Marc-Andre Flurry. they tried trading him to uh, where? Somewhere, and they were going to pick up half his salary, Vegas was. Yeah. So um, Carolina, my our studio engineer, Michael Burdick, all kind of Burdick's chiming in all of a sudden. So. A lot of new numbers out here, Mark. Yes. 
And Woodring, the quarterback, hands it off. And around the right end for Salzburg is Ethan Kishlock up the right sideline. And he's tripped up, but not before he gets inside the 35. Jackson Arone on the tackle for Homer Center, but a big gain from, what was the line of scrimmage? 40, 40, I believe. 40. 50, so 20. 24 yards. That was Kishlock? Ethan Kishlock. 83 points tonight, breaks the record of 2014 when uh, the teams combined for 78 in a 50 to 28 Wildcat victory. And Woodring, the quarterback, hands it to Kishlock again, cuts it uh, back, and a flag comes flying in from the line judge, and the Wildcats try to wrestle him down, and Ethan Kishlock, a junior 5'8", 140-pound running back, doesn't go down easy. Bryson Graham, Chris Graham will like that on the tackle. Chris, if you're still with us in Florida watching, your son just credited with that tackle, but Salzburg also called uh, holding penalty. We will have Mike Lazier and Greg Page on our post-game show. Maybe Ben Schmidt if we can grab him. Quite a night for Ben. What do you finish up? Two. 60, 74 maybe? 74, yep, on 13 carries. That's a lot of yards per carry. Yeah, Woodring it hands it off, and around the right end is Anthony, Anthony Ashbaugh inside the 40, down to about the 38, and there's another flag uh, on the field. There was a clear hold out there that time. <laughs> Austin Zenizak on the stop for Homer Center. They're going to, I think, maybe call a chop block was the preliminary well, I, signal. I saw an arm be, just dragged and spun <laughs> like you do in the schoolyard. That was clearly a hold on that one. So they'll back them up some more with 90 seconds left in the game, 89 to be precise. You know the officials don't want to call any penalties now. They just want this thing over with, and that one you just couldn't avoid. Now what are they doing? They're marching it every which way. They. Well, let's see. The referee's standing by the flag, and that's at the 48. Well, they, the ball's at the 30. They were awaiting uh, Homer Center's bench to decide if they wanted the penalty or not was the delay. So they back them up inside Trojan territory. If they go much further, they're going to be at the school. <laughs> Jeez, they're marking this off Wait forever. I'm, I'm, whoa. That's got to be a double penalty of some kind. I, I, what is going on? There's no 30-yard penalty from the point of the infraction. Well, that was about 15 there anyway. Oh, no, it's more than that. Well, they were the, the, the pet flag was at the 48. That Four. should be a 10-yard penalty, right? Two. If it was a chop block, 15. Oh, well, then that's what they marked it off. Here's Woodring rolling to his left, and he's going to tuck it away, and Cole McAnally not fooled and flings him out of bounds at the 37-yard line. They're going to keep the clock rolling here with 116 left. First Commonwealth Bank postgame show up next. We're going to get right to radio, radio replays, and then we'll hear from Greg Page and Mike Lazier. Zach, you can get uh, what a nice white our uniform, camera so. person lined up right down on the field tonight, right? Second down, I can't even tell you how far. Scoreboard says 37. The football resting at the Salzburg 37. They need to get to the Wildcat 26. The give to Kishlock, and Kishlock hit at the line of scrimmage, bounces it outside, runs through another tackle. Zenizak giving chase, gets by him. Good run inside to 40, down to about the 39-yard line. On the tackle, Jackson Arone. But that's 11, 21, 22 yards for Kishlock. He's closing in on 100 this drive. <laughs> they keep getting penalties, they'll give them more chances. They keep backing them up, so and he got, goes. He's got 46 yards right now. Kishlux, <laughs> he came out of the game. He was confused. He said, I think I ran here already. What do I do? <laughs> and now I ran here again. And he did. Uh, due to a couple of penalties, he had to retrace his steps. Third down, 13 from the Wildcat, 39. And Woodring rolls to his left, oh. being pressured. And he throws on the run and too tall for the intended receiver. Near side of the field, that was Brad Hennigan on the coverage. Caleb Palmer. 
another promising freshman player for Homer Center. Both of these teams have some good young players. I think Woodring is going to be a good player. Kish, well, uh, Kishlock's actually a junior. So fourth down and about 13 to go for the Trojans. We are down to 25 seconds remaining in the football game. It's been a long one. It sure is. It's, it's just plodding along. First quarter went relatively quickly. And then a lot of scoring from that point forward. Salzburg scored first in this game. Yeah. Woodring from the gun with a protector to his right. Slot receiver near side. And Woodring looking, sets up, going to throw down the middle of the field. And it's caught by Salzburg. And heading for the end zone is Brad Hennigan. 39-yard hookup. And Woodring has his first varsity touchdown pass for the youngster. He was only three of eight coming in for 16 yards. Looks good. Threw a strike there to Hennigan. And Salzburg makes it 56 to 33. Nice pass, nice catch. Pretty much put it right there over Homer's defender who went up to try to make, knock it down, missed it. And that nuts. Would that have needed a up. Ward Hilliard vertical leap <laughs> yeah, to knock that down. Yeah, old three inch leap there. <laughs> you couldn't jump over a nickel. Of course, I couldn't <laughs> do I'd it. I never either. jump over a nickel. I pick him up. Woodring hands it off. And with the football and being tackled at the five yard line is Anthony Ashbaugh. So the two point conversion fails. We're going to take a quick break on that tackle. Cole McAnulty, by the way. We're going to come back. Finish this one up. Salzburg puts another touchdown on the board. It's 56-33, 89 points on the board now here on a WCCS Wildcat and Trojan Football Network IRMC High School Sports Night back after this. I'm Joe Pittman. Indiana County in the 41st District deserve a senator who knows the issues, cares about people, and works hard to improve our quality of life. I will continue to stand for you in Harrisburg. Please vote for me, Joe Pittman, for State Senate on November 3rd. Maybe you've heard of the Colonial Experience, but did you know that that begins before you even walk in the door? At ShopColonialCars.com, we bring you a convenient way to begin your car shopping experience. Browse our selection of vehicles, and then come on in for the rest of the Colonial Experience. That's a lifetime warranty, lifetime state inspections, and more on your new vehicle, and a promise to keep working for you, even after you drive off the lot. Because giving you unparalleled service is what we do. ShopColonialCars.com. What happened? So one play, we should wrap this one up. Zach, you want to see if I'm coming through on that uh, radio there and see if you're not picking anything up there? Let's see. And we'll see if we can get this figured out in time for the post-game show, but let's wrap up this football game first. Homer Center, football at their own 26. Cole McAnulty, the quarterback, 10 ticks on the clock, and he hands it off to Logan Henry, and Logan Henry is going to be hit and dropped for a short loss, and we have just witnessed the final play in this football game on the tackle. Simpson on the... Stop for the Trojans, and we have a final score. 
56-33. Homer Center wins it over the Salzburg Trojans. They improved, uh, improved to three and one. Salzburg drops to one and four. We're gonna come back, get our first Commonwealth Bank postgame show kicked off. We'll have radio replays on the other side of the break. Homer Center wins it going away. Big night for Ben Schmidt, 56-33. The final score coming back on the WCCS Wildcat and Trojan Football Network. Okay, I gotta take my headset off again. Serve a senator who knows the issues, cares about people, and works hard to improve our quality of life. I will continue to stand for you in Harrisburg. Please vote for me, Joe Pittman, for State Senate on November 3rd. Maybe you've heard of the Colonial Experience, but did you know that that begins before you even walk in the door? At ShopColonialCars.com, we bring you a convenient way to begin your car shopping experience. Browse our selection of vehicles, and then come on in for the rest of the Colonial Experience. That's a lifetime warranty, lifetime state inspections, and more on your new vehicle, and a promise to keep working for you, even after you drive off the lot. Because giving you unparalleled service is what we do. ShopColonialCars.com really love the holidays at Graham Graham's, but it's tough to... Relax. <sighs> the dish guy heard us. Said with the Dish Anywhere app, we could bring the comfort of our home TV along with us. Oh. Live TV, on demand, even our DVR shows. Feel good shows. <laughs> that put us right at ease. Mostly. So many eyes. Take live TV, on demand, and your home DVR anywhere. Dish, tuned into you. I'm Pastor Katrina Lottie from Homer City United Methodist Church. We are honored to be able to support the Homer Center Wildcats. This has been a difficult year. We want to let you know that you are not alone. You are seen, you are heard, and you are loved. We are open for in-person worship on Sundays at 9.30 a.m. with the wearing of masks and social distancing. Our sermons are also available on our Homer City United Methodist Church YouTube channel. Come and be encouraged. This is State Representative Jim Struzzi, and I respectfully ask for your vote on Election Day. I will continue to fight for your rights and your future. I remain committed to improving the quality of life in our region and making sure our children have the best education possible. Re-elect me, Jim Struzzi, on November 3rd. ...owned Fox's Pizza Dens of Southern Indiana County are seeking staff for their Salzburg, Blairsville, and Homer City locations. Get a flexible schedule and a fun work environment with competitive pay. A manager is needed in Salzburg, and delivery drivers are needed at Homer City, Blairsville, Salzburg, and their new Alexandria location. Visit on the web at ajobyoucanlove.com or stop at a location nearest you or look on their Facebook pages to inquire about employment opportunities. Introducing... Oh, there you are. <clears throat> Introducing the card that gives you a better way to pay. You swiped, you've chipped, but now you can simply tap and go. The first Commonwealth Bank MasterCard contactless card makes checkout simple at millions of locations. Fast, secure, convenient. Tap your first Commonwealth Bank MasterCard contactless card at your favorite checkouts today. Snap wasn't handled on a shotgun snap and Salzburg recovered it at the Wildcat one yard line, making matters worse. Justin Walbeck, one of Homer Center's standout performers, knocked out of the game on that same play. Salzburg on the very first play after that turnover got the opening points in the football game.
The Indiana County Technology Center Adult Education Program offers a variety of career pathways for adults. Whether you're looking for a new career or simply just learn new skills, ICTC's selection of diverse programs will help you achieve your goals. Our programs are tailored to fit your needs and offer industry-specific certification opportunities. Call today at 724-349-6700 to find out how we can help you become more successful. If you want to reach more customers, advertise your business affordably, increase sales, and grow your business, this message is for you. Hi, I'm Mark Burdick, Vice President and General Manager. At Renda Broadcasting, our marketing and digital team will take your advertising to new heights. Your business will soar with Renda Broadcasting and Digital. So if you're just getting your business off the ground or your existing business is sputtering, let our team go to work for you. Call Renda Broadcasting and Digital at 724-465-4700. involved in a collision or accident, call the Collision Repair Specialist, Petroff's 81 Auto Body, a family-owned business serving the community since 1946. Call Petroff's 81 Auto Body and Climber, the Collision Repair Specialist, at 724-254-9417. I'm Pastor Katrina Lottie from Homer City United Methodist Church. We are honored to be able to support the Homer Center Wildcats. This has been a difficult year. We want to let you know that you are not alone. You are seen, you are heard, and you are loved. We are open for in-person worship on Sundays at 9.30 a.m. with the wearing of masks and social distancing. Our sermons are also available on our Homer City United Methodist Church YouTube channel. Come and be encouraged. Introducing, oh, there you are. <clears throat> Introducing, the card that gives you a better way to pay. You swiped, you've chipped, but now you can simply tap and go. The first Commonwealth Bank MasterCard contactless card makes checkout simple at millions of locations. Fast, secure, convenient. Tap your first Commonwealth Bank MasterCard contactless card at your favorite checkouts today. From the Mark Cable Insurance Agency. We're proud to be a part of tonight's internet broadcast. The Mark Cable Insurance Agency, which represents Erie Insurance, has locations in Salzburg and Blairsville. For all your home, car, life, and business insurance needs, we hope you will think of the Mark Cable Insurance Agency, conveniently located in Salzburg and Blairsville. Good luck, area teams. Scott Hillsbury here with Colonial Toyota. I'm excited that our doors are finally open and we're happy for all of our other local businesses too. We understand that buying a car right now may not be top priority for some, but for those looking for reliable transportation, we're here for you. With new Toyotas at 0% for 60 months and a great selection of certified pre-owned vehicles, there's no better time to buy. So stop in at Colonial Toyota or visit us online at shopcolonialtoyota.com where the experience can't be beat.
This is State Representative Jim Struzzi, and I respectfully ask for your vote on Election Day. I will continue to fight for your rights and your future. I remain committed to improving the quality of life in our region and making sure our children have the best education possible. Re-elect me, Jim Struzzi, on November 3rd. I'm Joe Pittman. Indiana County in the 41st District deserve a senator who knows the issues, cares about people, and works hard to improve our quality of life. I will continue to stand for you in Harrisburg. Please vote for me, Joe Pittman, for State Senate on November 3rd. Stadium down on the field with head coach Greg Page is Ward Hilliard and the Wildcats win it 56-33. Ward, down to you. Thank you, Mark. I'm with uh, head coach Greg Page and uh, wow, didn't get off to too good a start here tonight, coach. You had us a little concerned, but uh, you guys finally got the ship righted here and uh, that number three over there had a lot to do with that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> We just didn't get off to a good start. I mean, we give them a couple first downs, and then they punt, and we, you know, we're backed up, and then we drop a snap. Um, you know, I knew they were going to come out fired up and excited, and, you know, they, they had limited fans, but it sounded like they had a lot of people over here. But we did. We, we still made enough mistakes to, um, to really fill up a full ball game, but we also did enough good things to overcome. And, and um, you know, when you can still end up scoring that amount of points, uh, you know, you'll take it. Well, you lost a couple of key players, especially on defense and Justin Wallback, and then uh, I, I believe it was Travis Mock that went down also. Uh, wh what's the status of those guys? Well, first off, it's hard to replace either one of those guys. You know, Wallback in the middle of the defense, um, and I, I, we got to get him looked at. Mock came back. I think he's going to be okay. Uh, he came back to the game and, and, you know, remained on the sideline. So um, hopefully it's a situation where we can get both of them back. We want them to be healthy. Got some nice running out of uh, Cullen Troop out there. I thought he looked very good. And uh, Cole McAnally looks like uh, uh, somebody that you can make use of in the future, too. Yeah, you know, it's always good to see those younger guys get some opportunities. Uh, Cullen gets just as many reps in practice as Wally does. Uh, so we expect him to step up, and it was nice for him to get some, some yardage. And there, that was a time frame when he was getting some good chunks where our line was really coming off the ball because they were bringing a lot of pressure. Um, I don't fault our guys up front. We made a couple mistakes at critical times uh, with a few penalties. But by and large, um, you know, they're, they, they're standing up and they're moving around and they're bringing a lot of people. And sometimes that's risk-reward, and we were able to hit them with some big plays at a few times, um, you know, despite that pressure. Well, we talked about some of the guys that you lost, but you had some young guys step in, and I thought they did a very good job. I was impressed that you got to be impressed with the effort Salzburg made. They just weren't going to go away, were they? No, I say it every year. I mean, you know, last year they got us, and uh, they played a nice game, and they got a nice team this year. They got some good leaders, some kids that run the ball hard, and uh, they come off the ball hard up front. I mean, it's they're always aggressive. you got to give them credit, and um, it's one of those things where you, you're happy to get out of here with a win because of every time you come down here, you know the atmosphere is going to be such that, that they get a lot of support and um, they're going to come out excited and, and, you know, right off the bat, they get one on the doorstep and, and punch it in. And then you're, you know, you're behind the eight ball right away. But we responded, and that's the most important thing. Well, you got purchase line next week. I don't know if you heard, but they pretty much ran all over Blairsville tonight. So they're going to be a handful, and I'm sure you're aware of that. But uh, one at a time, huh? Yeah, we'll enjoy this for a couple of days. And I knew purchase line, it, it didn't matter what happened the first couple of weeks of the season. They were uh, faced with some better teams in the conference right off the bat. And I just knew they're going to be a solid football team. I know they're going to come into our place, um, you know, with the same mindset. They got a really good running back, but there are other guys. Uh, they got some other guys that are starting to step up. And, um, you know, so that's the thing. We got to get back and get ready and have a good plan in place. Well, Coach, I wish you well. I appreciate you coming down here, and uh, we're going to get your quarterback over here on real quick. I'm going to check with Mark if he wants me to get Ben right now. We'll do that. I'm surprised he could walk. Uh, 
Ben, uh, just a great game, bud. I, I mean, I've seen you for four years. You know, my, my son Michael has talked to you. He, he's encouraged by what you do. He always asks how you did. And uh, tonight was just spectacular. When you make those reads, what are you keying on? Uh, we're usually keying on an outside backer. Just, yeah, mostly outside backer. Just looking to do opposite what he does. Your line gave you a little time to throw. Early in the game, you were being pressured a good bit, but uh, you, you hung in there, and as the game wore on, you seemed to have a little more time, a little more control of your throws. Yeah, they were bringing the house all night, and we made some adjustments, but they're still getting some pressure, but luckily we're still able to get balls off and still have success on offense. It's nice to have a kid like Colin Troop step in and, and fill in for Justin. It takes a little pressure off you, doesn't it? Yeah, Justin's a great player. He went down, and Colin stepped up big. He made great runs at very important times of the game, and he deserves a lot of credit for this win tonight. I'll tell you, I haven't seen a guy do the things you're doing this year. I hope you can keep it up. We're going to let you go. I know you've been out here quite a while. Great game, and keep it up. Man. Thank you. That's Ben Schmidt, Mark. We're going to send it back up to you here and uh, see what we can get done. I have to get Mike Leisure here, don't I? All right. We will come back uh, with – Coach Lazier, actually, if I can find the stat board, we're going to jump ahead so we can get on out of here. Uh, uh, long, long night. Uh, we'll give you the Salzburg rushing in this football game, if I could make out WA's uh, stats. 223 yards rushing for Salzburg. They were led by Gino Bartolini, 19 carries for 90 yards and 87 yards for Angelo Bartolini, or 81, that is, uh, for Angelo. Off the bench, Ethan Kishlock with 46 yards rushing. Passing yardage, they had 162. They were just 4 of 14, an interception belonging to Michael Krajosik. So 385 yards of total offense for the uh, Salzburg Trojans. For the Homer Center Wildcats, Ben Schmidt, 274 yards tonight uh, on 13 carries and four touchdowns. Other than that, he didn't do much. Uh, moved past Pete Kuda, third place all time now. Colin Troop, 47 yards rushing. He had to uh, play for Justin Walbeck, who was knocked out of the game early. And uh, the Wildcats rushing yardage in the football game, 362 total yards. Passing, Ben Schmidt was 8 of 13 for three touchdown passes and 204 yards passing. Total offense in the game for Homer Center, 566 yards. So a dominating uh, performance, Ben Schmidt. Just uh, something special to watch here tonight. Uh, no question about that. He's uh, been something else in his career, and uh, he's closing in. I mean, it's not without uh, – it's, it's within reach, uh, Jesse Lee – the all-time leading uh, ground gainer will try to update that uh, stat board while Ward's interviewing Coach Lazier if indeed he can get a hold of him. Ben already, of course, every pass he completes, he uh, breaks his own record for passing yardage. And with three touchdown passes tonight, he tied the great Steve Wasick, 39 touchdowns all time. So his next touchdown pass uh, and I think you can uh, mention Ben Schmidt in the same breath as Steve Wasick. Uh, those two, I never saw Steve Wasick play, but I heard a lot about him. And Ben Schmidt, of course, one of the all-time greats at Homer Center. We're going to ship it right back down to Ward Hilliard with Salzburg coach Mike Leisure. Yeah, we're going to have this for the coach's corners. So you, you're going to be helping out with that a little bit tomorrow. But I'm with coach Mike Leisure and Mike uh, Great effort by your guys. You jumped out to 7 nothing lead. Looked like the Wildcats were going to help you out a little bit tonight, but they kind of got turned around. Yeah, I was pretty happy with the way we came out and played. Uh, you know, our kids, uh, something we haven't really started well this year, but our kids came out and played well um, at the beginning. And, you know, they were fired up, and, you know, I was happy to see it. I, I thought you guys might have run a few more sweeps based on what Penn's Manor did last uh, week against the Wildcats, but you uh, – kept going Gino up the middle and he was working out for you pretty well yeah we we run uh, a wing T offense similar to Penn's Manor so uh, we were able to hit some runs we were able to move the ball tonight um, you know like I said and, and Braden uh, stats had a 
pretty good game at quarterback. He hit some passes, so you know when when you can hit some passes, it opens up the run game as well. Your your defense just uh, struggled to, to stop. Well, Ben Schmidt, that's pretty obvious, and uh, that is a load. The kid is strong and he's fast, and tough to defend. Yeah, he he's. I mean, what can you say? You know, he his record speaks for himself, but. Uh, the kid, he, he just goes and goes. And, you know, we had guys there. We had four guys there, the one one play, and he, he carried guys. But uh, you got to give that kid credit. I know what that kid does, you know, his work ethic and all that. Um, but, uh, you know, just watching him, he, he's an animal, and he's he's a tough football player. Um, so you got to give him credit. And they, he's got a good supporting cast. You know, he throws the ball well. Um, so you can't just – you know, put 10 guys on him because he, he can put the ball in the air. He's got a good group of receivers. So uh, give that whole offense credit. you got to be happy with the player guys as well. I thought the, the thing that impressed me was you guys did not quit. You guys play hard from start to finish, and uh, that's, a, that's a credit to you and your staff. Yeah, our our kids played. I mean, the whole game we, we played tough, uh, you know, from the start to the end. And, you know, that's that's what you want to see. You know, when things aren't going the right way, your kids keep fighting, and uh, we were able to do that tonight. Well, I appreciate you coming out here. It's a little cold being in the short sleeves, and uh, but uh, I, you're going to get this thing turned around. I know you guys are really dedicated to what you're doing, and you got a good group here. We're going to see we're going to see Salzburg back on the W side real soon. Yeah, I appreciate it. Yeah, our kids are keep they keep working hard. It, things haven't gone our way, but. Uh, proud of our effort and we, we got a big game next week and uh you know we'll get we'll work and get better well thanks a lot mike good luck to you the rest of the way Thank you. Appreciate it. that's mike leisure of salzburg here at trojan stadium and uh we're gonna send it back to mr burdick all right the ward thank you very much and we are going to wrap things up here uh this evening 56 33 and we do want to update Ben Schmidt's rushing uh, mark. He, after his 274-yard performance, uh, Ben, with 2,749 yards rushing, he is 400 behind Ian Lee in uh, second place. And in first place, Jesse Lee, Ben would need 514 yards to pass Jesse Lee as the school's all-time leading ground gainer, which would be some accomplishment to finish his career as a four-year starter uh, breaking uh, both the rushing and passing records. We want to thank D. Ober, our executive uh, producer on the video side, Zachary Vogt, uh, our lead cameraman tonight. We had Luke Sell and uh, Kendra Bear from ICTC helping us out. A long night, a lot of points, record-breaking in this 55th all-time meeting. And Homer Center wins it to improve to 3-1. and one. We'll be at Memorial Field in Homer City on the air at 620 next Friday night. When Homer Center hosts Purchase Line, they were a 42-nothing winner over Blairsville this evening. We hope you enjoyed our audio and video coverage. Thank you, D. Ober, and our crew from IUP's TV production team. Thank you, Michael Burdick, the executive producer of Wildcat Sports, back at 9th and Philadelphia Streets. Thanks to our spotter, Jim uh, McLaughlin, speaking for Ward Hilliard. Mark Burdick reminding you the final score here tonight as Ben Schmidt rushes for four, throws for three. Homer Center wins at 56 to 33 over the Salzburg Trojans until we talk to you next Friday night from Memorial Field. Good night everybody from Salzburg.